All right, we got David Lucas here. Yeah, we in here. So you used to work at the comedy store? Yeah, right? man. I was a door guy at the comedy store, you know. Um, the old talent coordinator who's now working at uh, Joe Rogan's club, Adam, he uh, recognized my talent from the open mic, which 150 to 200 comics signed up for, put me on family and friends, offered me a job. I was a door guy. And that just led to, like, the doors opening, you know, once you're at the comedy store, which is, or was, but, you know, due to quarantine, you know, it's a little, but was the mecca of comedy. I think it'll be again one day. It just opens you up to everything, and everybody gets to see you. Rogan got to see me, Shab, Chris D'Elia, Eric Griffin, Tony Hinchcliffe, and that's pretty much how yeah. my career blew up <laughs> right and, and for those that don't know the comedy store is like where everybody starts yes and yes. they put bangers ahead of you to see if you can compete with them so even dave Chappelle, rogan yeah. whoever they still go back there to Absolutely. test shit and go back but they put like the little guys that are coming up before like a rogan or a Chappelle or whatever they throw you they throw you to the sharks yeah, like because that's, you gotta have your game right, right? That's the Mitzi Shore way. They throw you to the sharks. They 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 want to make sure you're ready for the world. It's it's intimidating, but it's what you need. Right, yeah. but you got in there. Yeah, I got in there, man. Now, how did you get in as a doorman? <laughs> Legit, um, I committed in 2019 to go into the comedy store every Monday to sign up for potluck, whether I got on or not. And uh, I was, uh, me and my daughter's mom was living together at the time. And she said, I'll support you, but you got to go to the comedy store every Monday. And I was like, I bet I'm going to do it. And what's crazy is the Monday I didn't want to go, she texted me. She's like, where you at? I was like, at the house. She said, if you're home when I get off, pack your shit because you out. And that's the Monday Adam asked me to come back for family and friends two weeks later. And who's Adam? Adam was the talent coordinator at the comedy store at the time. Isn't there a girl that runs that? Or yeah. Um, what's her name now? It's uh, I hear Rogan talking about her all the time. because he Her name her. is uh, Emily LaFord. Emily, right, right. Yeah. And <clears throat> so you get in as a doorman, mm -hmm. and that's like your first step in. So you make right. your way in there. Right. So as a doorman, you're guaranteed, uh, what is it, two spots a week? But if you know how to finesse it, I'm a finesser, you can get up every time you work. So you're guaranteed two spots a week, but yeah. but you're like the opener for like heavy hitters, right? Yeah, opener for... Because <laughs> I mean, like, so they would give door guys, like, if the show started at 8, we do like the 8 to the 8.05 spot. So you're going up when everybody's being seated and people are not really paying attention and shit like that. And the other spots were just, you know, sporadic. They might throw you up. But the other people are, are watching you to see if you have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which So even though you're going up and they're just getting seated, the big wigs in the back, they're watching to see, hey, does David have it? <clears throat> you know, they're watching, watching. Because you're, you're going up against <clears throat> the best of the best. When I, uh, when I realized that I wouldn't be um, uh, working at the comedy store long, and I think the employees realized that uh, one of the managers, Jen, I went up on a, a New Year's Eve show. Uh, so Louis J. Gomez, who is over like the skanks, he's doing a skank fest in Houston. Uh, he had a show and he asked me to be on it for New Year's Eve. And a lot of the managers don't really watch our opening spots, but they were all in the main, it was in the main room, New Year's Eve going into New Year's uh, for 2020 before all the bullshit happened. And I go up on that show and I obliterated the room <laughs> like I'm, and that's a heavy spot new year's that's Eve, a heavy shit. spot bro. <laughs> right i come off stage i go to the back bar where only like employees and you know big name comedians are supposed to be and the manager jen is like you will not be working here in six months if you're working here i'll fire you we have to get you out there because you're funny as fuck she told me that and i'm like shit because i love this job I wanted to be a door guy for like seven years since I moved to, to, to LA, and I'm like, man, why you? Why would you fire me? <laughs> like, because you know, like sometimes we're not really ready for what the world has prepared for us or the universe has prepared for us. So I was like, I'm not ready to leave, not knowing what six months from now holds. Um, and she's like, you have to get the fuck out of here. 
And I'm like, I just barely started been working here a month and a half. And she's like, I don't care. I'm going to fire you. And I just, like, took that to heart. And, like, before the quarantine was happening, I was on the road a lot with, like, Eric Griffin, Tony Hinchcliffe. Like, me and Eric Griffin were in Canada. Me and Tony Hinchcliffe, before the world shut down, we did a sold-out weekend at the La Jolla Comedy Store. Then we come back, and it's like, what the fuck? The Comedy Store is closed. Yeah. So... I was real like, oh, shit, the comedy store is closed, man, during quarantine. I'm going to have to start all back over, you know, this, that, and the other. Like, damn, nobody's going to remember who I am. And then, you know, like, quarantine happened. It opened up in Austin. I started, I went out there with Tony and, you know, me doing shows with Tony. Then Rogan would see me. He'd be a guest on Kill Tony. He's like, bro, you're funny as fuck. Like, damn, man, Tony has a real form system. And then me being on Kill Tony opened up to me, opened it for Rogan, opened it up for Rogan. I think I opened up for Rogan like six times since January. Really? Which for Rogan is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Since then, he's probably only had 20 shows. So I've been on like, what, one fourth of his shows? Yeah, but you see what that woman <clears throat> did for you? She didn't fire you. She right. just knew that you had talent. Right. And that, you know, like... What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, Dave? Be a doorman? You're better than that. Right. So she didn't fire you. What she did was she was a good woman and said, "Look, you're better than this. Right. You're fired, but not fired, kind right. of in a way, right? You know, you need to take your talent and move on because th this ain't for you. What fucking a doorman? No, you're better than that. That woman helped you. You know what I mean? Bro, it's so crazy. I hope you send her a nice little card on her. Birthday. Oh, that's my baby. Yeah. Jen, I love Jen. What's up, Jen? Shout out to you, baby. If you yeah, watch this podcast, yeah. always got to remember the people yeah. that got you where you're at, right? So, you know, man, just from 20, from when the world ended, <laughs> in a way, technically. <laughs> kind of did. <laughs> right? I'm with you on that one. From where, from where the world ended to this new normal we have, mask and vaccination mandates and shit like that, the place that my career is in right now with COVID is, like, insane. Like, I, I headlined the Pittsburgh Improv, like, three weeks ago. I sold 158 tickets on a Sunday at 7 p.m., which is unheard of because oh, yeah. that's the show they give to newbies. Like, oh, let's see what you can do. 158 tickets I did. And you know Sundays. Who the <clears> hell, <throat> and I'm not kissing your ass, but I'm, I'm saying like on a, a Sunday. is horrible. Sun, Sunday's like laid back day, <clears throat> watch football, watch whatever, just relax right. and get ready for the week. I've drank all I mean? weekend. Yeah, like, like, I don't want to do shit on a Sunday. Yeah, like you're trying to get ready for Monday, you know what I mean? And, and you bang it out. And then what people I don't think know is that Frank Lucas from American Gangster is your it's uncle, my right? great uncle. Yeah. Your great uncle, yeah. 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 Now, when you saw that movie come out, was that weird to you? You know, like I read everything. I, I know like you... So with my dad's side, because he's originally an uh, immigrant from Cuba, um, I'm not the closest with them. But, like, I've met Frank. Uh, I've met a few of my cousins, like Anthony Lasseter, who, who is uh, Frank's closest nephew, who, like, took care of Frank in his latter years they, in New Jersey. And I'm not the closest with them, but Frank getting sick brought me closer to that side of the family. So uh, when that movie came out, I think I met Frank at a family reunion, maybe in the early 2000s in Virginia. <clears throat> and, you know, like the man I met was in like a wheelchair. He's old. You know, his heyday is gone. Like the fur coats were gone. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, so you yeah. get to see a guy who's like, there's no way this old man who can barely take care of himself did all that shit. Made $2 million a week. Nah, this is. This ain't my lineage, but when I watched that movie and then he confirmed that that was true, but it was watered down, I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, like, what else did you do, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, father time catches up with you no matter what. Don't matter absolutely. who you are. You know, but nah, he was a, he was a G, bro. Yeah. Your uncle I, was one hell of a man. And, you know, learning from a guy like Bumpy Johnson. Yeah. Him alone, you know. <laughs> Did that really happen when he walked out of the church? Is that when they were, they really grabbed him? Uh, sort you know, of, like they twist the movie, sort of, kind of make it more drama. <clears throat> sort of, kind of not. The uh, off of the record, uh, I think uh, he was arrested with maybe like five million dollars not found off of the record. 
Yeah. He's deceased now, so <laughs> <laughs> off the record. I think it was something like that. But did they get him out of the church? They really fucking come there. You know what's crazy? I never asked that. I was just always curious. But the fur not that I doubt that they would do that, but the fur coat scene was true. Yeah. When he really got on their radar is when he showed up to the Joe Frazier fight with the uh, fur coat. That was true. Yeah, he was front row, man. Yeah. With Joe Frazier. I mean, you know. Uh, you got to wear a fur coat, right? He's like, who the fuck is this? But he shouldn't have done that because of what the shit he was in. He should have just stayed low. I'd have been in the back way up to Way back. <laughs> like, 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 like the, nose, the nosebleed. The nosebleed, right. bro. Because, I mean, you're, you're moving a lot of heavy weight, you yeah. know, and I agree with you. You know, just from the movie, you know, and if it's real. But the director, I forget who it was. But when I looked up, it, he writes a lot of realistic uh, mm -hmm. scripts he throws some drama in but it's pretty much the way it was yeah and to me your uncle kind of fucked himself in a way the money got to him you know what i mean because if if you look at it you know he lay low he lo laid low and then started getting around the wrong people yeah and then the wrong people in my opinion i don't know i mean you're talking about a country boy from north carolina right so now all of a sudden you got millions and millions right. i mean how long I mean, me, you, anybody else in here, Rob. Two I, million a week. Two million. 40, 50 yeah. years ago. Yeah. That, which would probably. Right now is still good money. Rob, what do you, what do you think that is right now? That's probably like four uh, or five uh, million. Four or five million? Oh, yeah. I what bet. You, what do you think, Ty? More, maybe. More. Five that's, million a week right now. Yes, you think it's five million? Five million. Five million? I think it's about, with inflation, about five yeah. million. Yeah. So that's like 20 million. 20 million. That's a hundred million fucking month, man. Yeah. He should have just stayed in that uh, right. Macy shit, right? I mean, but... But it's understandable. <clears throat> you know, it gets to you. We're all of, human. At the end of the day, Frank Lucas not even having any secondary education took a family out of North Carolina and established a construction company, multiple mechanic shops, car shops, restaurants, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? The th for me... And I don't know if it's because of my personality. Let me, I live good for 40 years and do 20 years in prison and the last 10 years of my life die broke. That sounds pretty fun to me. <laughs> I don't know about 20. I mean, I, I would do 10. i take a 10 to okay, live like that. 10, 10, 10, 10, 20 is a long time, man. And for everybody out there who says Frank Lucas is a snitch, he snitched on not one drug dealer. They were all Cricket corrupted police officers. And if you don't believe that, all you got to do is Call write me. a letter, Freedom of, <laughs> freedom, freedom of Information there Act. You, you can get it right Freedom there. of Information yeah. Act. Yeah, no. Nah. I mean, so fuck it. But he lived the life, he and he did he, it the way he wanted. Yeah, and he, he was did. very smart. Your uncle yeah, was very smart. With no education. And you know what? The smartest people are the ones with no education. Yes. Because you got to think about it, right, Dave? You go to college. What do you really learn in college? How, you know what you learn? A to, fucking loan that you got to pay back. Right. How to be complacent. <laughs> yeah, great. How to follow rules. Right. How to, <laughs> how to follow the rules so then you get content and yeah. you go nowhere in life. MLA format. That's what you learn in college. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. Turnitin.com. That's what I learned. <laughs> yeah. And nowadays, the time that we're in now, I mean, fuck, you go to college, what? Okay, so now you go to college, right? You get a degree. You get your bachelor's degree. Let's just say you decide you want your master's. Mm -hmm. Now you owe like 100K, <laughs> right? Now you're going out into life. You got 100K debt. There's a hundred people just like you, right? Doing the same fucking thing, right? None of, in my opinion, this is me speaking. In my opinion, probably ten percent of all that fucking money and time that you spent in college, you're gonna actually use in life, and ten percent is a gift, right? But if you're a guy like you, or like your uncle, or like myself, and others, when you make your own business your right. own way, and you work yeah, for exactly. yourself, and you're smart, and you never give up. I believe in my belief that college is bullshit right. other than a fucking loan. Unless Absolutely. you're going to be like a doctor or something major like that. I and mean, doctors that, that's pay for their loans for 40 years. Yeah, and they're still fucking paying. And they don't graduate till they're 30, yeah. 35. Yeah, because they got to do all that college, <laughs> right, Dave? Residency. And then they got to do, what, 10 years of residency? <clears throat> so, Christ, by the time you're fucking done, you're 50. <laughs> like, you're halfway out the fucking door. I got a friend who's still in college to be a doctor. And we're like, we're the same age. And it's like, bro, we graduated high school 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I've read like a gazillion medical books, right. and I can pretty much hang with them. You know, I could give you a, a, a what's that shit called? A, a tracheotomy. The hell is that? 
uh, when like it sounds you, like a, if you're you gonna go, cut my balls off. If something. you're in <laughs> if you're in anaphylactic shock, anaphylaxis, whatever that shit is called, yeah, and your uh, airway closes up, I could cut your neck and. Save you it. survive until the ambulance gets there. All right. Well, if you ever take me out to eat <laughs> mushrooms, <laughs> I want to slice, but I, I you, you know, I want to still look good. So okay. you better be able to stitch to it. I give you a trick. And I'll go to my guy and get plastic <laughs> surgery. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not opposed to plastic surgery. Fuck. Why? Why not? <clears throat> as long as you can. Fuck. I uh, I lost some weight, so I have these yeah, like you're... sagging bags under my eyes. So when I get I like, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm the same. That's how I look at plastic surgery. Yeah. Like, like, bro, when I first saw you, like, this motherfucker looked perfect. I just get perfect. Botox. My my daughter, like, you know, people, I rarely. How many read... CCs? Not a lot, right? No, I know. I no, Fuck. Man. Give me. No, no, no. I get hammered. Really? Fuck yeah. You fuck. don't look, like, tight. Like, your face is moving when you're talking. I got a good doctor for. Okay. I got a good guy. <clears throat> you know, he's doing. Knows where to put it. No, I get like 80. 80 IU. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not like. You don't look. Uh, so Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, uh, Nicole Murphy. Bro. You know her? Yeah. Uh, you know Eddie Murphy? I don't know Eddie Murphy. I know his daughter. He's I funny. His, fuck. I know his ex-wife. And uh, when I'm around her and she smiles, she can't even make a full <laughs> smile. <laughs> no, I, I'm not that one. Yeah, that. you're not that bad, bro. No, no. I just get a little bit of Botox. Anybody that doesn't, go to work. So, See, you don't need that shit. You guys don't get wrinkled. Yeah, I'm negro. Yeah, we were talking. He's got Italian in him. Yeah, I, I got I, I got some black in me too. Yeah, yeah of course, bro. Italians are light skinned black people. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> but, like, I, I mean, literally. The, I mean, like, if I never ever tan, I put a tanning bed in my house. Yeah, but I, I but different bulbs. But if I never do, I, I'm still pretty dark. I seen the movie Casino, and a few of those people had hair of the Negro descent. Yeah, <laughs> like, my, believe it or not, my hair is curly. I curly as totally, motherfucker. I totally believe that. Yeah, I, I totally believe. I went to this broad, right, and I, you know, like they do that straight and shit. Yeah, because it was so curly. Well, the bitch made it too thin, went fucking crazy. So now I just say fuck it and put in um, whatever the hell. What is it? Uh, Italians and Jewish have curly hair. Jewish people. Yeah, but Jewish people are cheap. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing against Jewish people. No, nothing. Maybe. My my managers are Jewish. Shout out. Yeah, but, to the but I'll Jews. tell you what, they're good at business. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, you want a Jewish guy they, on your side, man. I don't know why they like to make money because they don't spend it. No, they, 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 <laughs> cheap motherfuckers. Man. <laughs> they, you know, I had they, a lot of Jewish friends, right? Really, really nice, yeah. and I mean, the, one of the the best business people. Yeah. But fuck, if you owe them a cent, they'll remember that for the next <laughs> six motherfucking months. Yo, Tommy, Tommy you owe me five dollars. Right. Five dollars for what? Ah, oh, well, remember you told me I, I got your burrito. Christ, it was three months ago. You know, I remember this shit. <laughs> Five but, when, but, you know, but when it comes to business, man, they win. They win all the time, bro. But, but you know, like, bro, in my career now, like, I uh, hang around a lot of rich people. And the rich people I hang around, some of them are not entertainers. The ones that are not entertainers, are, they live like they're poor. They have, like, nice cribs and a decent car. But when it comes to anything else, like... I went to uh, Las Vegas with one of the richest guys I know. He didn't take a suitcase. His, uh, if you don't want to say his name, don't say. Uh, Spencer Garber. Okay. He's over. Uh, he's over uh, Tupac's record label. Oh really? Yeah, he's over the Tupac. While he's deceased, he's over Tupac's record label. That's my dog. Well, tell him to stop mixing fucking shit beats with the lyrics. <laughs> I, well, they f agreed or not. Mm -hmm. Pac had what a hundred songs left, yeah. and then his mom got the rights to the. Uh, to the material right then she got him and the original beats that Pac had are not the original beats that this guy put on and right. they suck right I, you know yeah uh, you it's know a it's a numbers right. game it's a numbers game they suck yeah Did, have you heard the ones they're without not, his they're, beat? they're not they're hard what, they're not what Pac would want no but he's over a uh, Pac's estate or whatever yeah the, the music side we flew to Vegas private jet he didn't take no suitcase. All of his outfits he bought at Target. Shoes included. You and know how much was... money he's making off of <laughs> I'm like, You know how much Target? money he's making off of fucking Pox on release shit? Even though the beat is terrible? Target? A gazillions. I mean, that's fine. Don't don't bring a suitcase, but Target. That, Target. I got me Target. That's how they are. Though. Target, Target, bro. He bought it from Target. Listen to me. I, I was at I was at a bar one day, right? Yeah. And and I'm sitting there, and this guy's in sandals and like a shitty ass fucking t shirt. Looked like total like he didn't shower for a week. <laughs> I go ask my friend. I you know he's ordering all this shit. And everybody knows him. Right. I asked my friend. I said, "Who the fuck is this with this fucking nasty fucking like? Does he need a no tail clipper? You know what I mean?" <laughs> 
Little did I know, the guy's a fucking billionaire. I was a fucking like 90 foot yacht. But that's how they are. And that's why they got 90 foot yachts. Because they go to Target. They penny pinch. Idiots everybody. like me and you, we go to Gucci and Louis Vuitton <laughs> and fucking Rolex and shit. You know what I mean? We're morons. They're we're, the smart ones with idiots. the sandals yeah. in, in the big house. You know what I mean? And nobody knows shit. Me yeah. and you, we're dumbasses. We go get the, as soon as the Yeezys come out, we're there. The Pradas, we're I there. I need them. I need them. The Gucci em. shoes that are exactly. comfortable, they come out. I don't know who took over Gucci now, but uh, I need his head Who is over Gucci? Because, yeah. No, yeah. because remember the designer changed? And now it's all weird. Yeah. Yeah, Gucci is. Uh, I don't know who's on Gucci. But remember before, whoever was running before was kind of like our because, style. Like because now like, Gucci's doing the the shoes that say it's fake and the shirts that say it's fake and right. not real. And yeah, they coming out with like Where bees she? and butterflies on the fucking bags. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I got a, butterflies in my sneakers right now, but these are all right. I love butterflies. But, yeah, but the, the other store. shit is yeah. a little bit crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's like, man, go back to the OG Gucci. The OG, OG with the two, the, the uh, horseshoe. Yeah. That's the shit that's, that's been around forever. Yes. And then Louboutin came in. Louboutin. And uh, yeah. the women love the red bottoms. I don't like Louboutin shoes. No, I don't like them. They're too narrow. Not for a guy. Like, not no. for, I, I own zero red bottoms. I own zero too. Yeah, that, that that's a girl thing. I, I'm McQueen. not being fucking sexist for Christ's sake. No, 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 no. Alexander McQueen is my Alexander yeah. Alexander McQueen and Balenciaga. That's Balenciaga, my, yeah. That's my yeah. They make good shit. Yeah, Balenciaga, that's my yeah. Shoe. Gucci, Balenciaga, Alexander McQueen, uh, Rolex. You know what? I never got Rolex make shoes. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying say, like damn, I don't make enough money. They make pen. <laughs> they make pens. They make good pens. I'm not buying a Rolex pen. It's pretty nice. I like yeah, mine black better though. Yeah, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it's, how it's, much it's, is a Rolex pen? A Rolex pen, uh, eight. eight K? Pounds. No, 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 eight hundred. Yeah, that motherfucker better write. It better. It I does. Bet, it, it does. I better I mean, put I my mean, finger down and start writing. But I, I like these. These are mine black. <laughs> That's a Rolex pen. No, no, this is uh, mine black. The, or mine black. Uh, I don't know, four hundred something like that. These are better though. Can I have that? You want it? No, I I rather take four hundred dollars. <laughs> Can I write on a piece of paper? Where's the piece of paper? Let me write it. Here, here throw here. Rob's gonna throw it here. Let me T- Tyler's uh, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I just wanna write with it and see how a four hundred dollar pair writes. Watch. Watch how good that motherfucker writes. Oh, it ain't even got no ink in it. Hold on. Damn, bro. Damn. I, mean, I just fucked myself. Where's the silver yeah. one? <laughs> yeah, Rob, it's your fault. Where's the silver one, dog? Hold on. Here you go. Right with, I I gotta change the ink for it. <laughs> All right, now not, use that one. Not an advertisement for Mont Blanc. No. Oh, okay. All right, like, now that now that, that writes very smooth. Now write your name. It's like the difference between riding in a Toyota Camry and riding in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> that writes very like it's like it's gliding over the paper. Like yeah, that's that's pretty decent. Right. Yeah. So when you write with that, it's nice, you know, especially yeah. if like you're doing business shit. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, who cares about the money? It's the point that you. you when I get rich, I want to buy one of the old school pens where you got to dip it in the ink with a feather quill. Oh uh, yeah, remember that? Like yeah. uh, George Washington yeah, shit yeah, with with the point yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> I'm gonna sign all my checks like that. Like that would kind of be cool. I wouldn't have the patience <laughs> because it, because if it went through the paper, I'd rip it. Off. I, mean, I, I, I I got a bad temper, so it, it wouldn't work. For You're me. Italian, bro. You're just weird. and you think you can write with it? Yeah, I would. yeah. Well, you better dip be high as a bit. fucking kite on some indica because when you dip that motherfucker in there and it don't write right, you ain't gonna be too happy. You'll be <laughs> me and you both will be wrapping the shit up and throwing the paper. <laughs> Fuck that pen. I got a bad temper. And then go back and talk to the guy and say, "Look, I want another one." Right. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm a comedian, but I got a bad temper. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny that you are as funny as you are. You know, as I started to research you and, and everything else. Right. It's funny because you're like kind of like bipolar. Yes. Like with respect, I'm saying. Yeah. That. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it, it's like it's like you're like really funny. Yeah. But then there's like another side of you that is like very like kind of like not 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 not, not funny, funny just enough. like <laughs> you know like like, like like if i didn't know you right uh-huh. and i'm just hanging out with you and yeah. we're having dinner yeah. i would never think this guy's a fucking Absolutely comedian not. then i watch you on the comedian shit and i'm like well hold on people call me bipolar <laughs> now and what i'm gonna do dave i'm gonna have them hang out with you and then i don't look so goddamn bad <laughs> Man, comedian, dave's the bipolar one i'm just a tiny bit comedians are fucked up bro like you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be funny around my girl. I'll be funny around people I know. But if I don't know you, like, man, get away from me, bro. 
Well, lobster's the best thing in life, lobster. man. It is. I'm goofy when I know you, you know, yeah. and I had a couple of drinks right now, so, like, I'm loose and yeah. I'm fun. We had uh, Michael Dowden, who was a 7'5", thanks to uh, Tyler, and he was driving around, and a guy was going to kill himself. He was going to yeah. commit suicide. And he had watched something with uh, Michael Dowd. He was like a dirty NYPD cop. Uh -huh. And the guy had listened to him, and Dowd is funny as a mo I mean, he is the funniest. He's funnier than you. Yeah. Because I'm real. So I tell you the truth. He's yeah. funny as fuck. Unintentionally. Rob, Rob, how, how funny <clears throat> is Dowd? I mean, bro. He's like a crazy funny, though. Like, but see, the I thing mean, is, literally, like, crazy. Like, but see, like, the thing not is, all there. See, crazy. the thing is, bro, like, there's a lot of people that are unintentionally funnier than me but when it's intentional funny no he couldn't do what you do i'm not saying that so what, what i'm saying is like i wanted the best in the world no i know you are yeah. no no what i'm saying is like one-on-one -on -one, he's just naturally a nut funny as hell but on stage he'd be terrible i like that like bro i i'm so you know what i'm saying he's man. like dave dave he's like so what i i robbed some drug dealers fuck them it was just drug dealers what? Right. right I'd have been laughing. <laughs> I was dying. We were right, all man, dying. You had me cracking up before we even rolled the camera. Yeah. Dog. He's like, it was just drug dealer's <laughs> ass. And when I took a little bit of coke and sipped it, all, <laughs> sipped it off a girl's ass, whatever, fuck it. You know what I mean? You laughing fucking, my ass. I was dying. We were all yeah. dying. You yeah. know what I mean? But he couldn't do what you do. That's you know, the shit I He's like. just naturally like that and a good guy. You, you're able to separate the funny shit and then you can be a man like you are to your woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And act like a man. But then there's the other side of you that's funny. See, Mike is just, he's off the wall 24-7. Right. Yeah. You know, every time I talk to him, there's coke on a girl's ass. <laughs> now, 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 now she's chasing after him. He don't know how to get rid of her. What never I? did coke, and I <laughs> probably never will. No, I never did either. I, I liked I like hyper stuff, so I never fucked with it because I knew, for many reasons. But one of the reasons was I knew I would like it, and that would be it. That's why I only drink tequila. It's an upper, not a downer. See, I thought tequila was a downer. Nah, bro. It's nah. made out of agave, bro. That's the best liquor it's you can drink. It's made out of drink. what? Agave. What the fuck's that? It's like a... It's buried... I think agaves are buried in the ground. A cactus, Rob? No, he's lying. Cactus. No, cactus isn't like this. That's, a cactus? I mean, they are in Mexico only. Like a succulent... A Maybe something a like succulent. that. There we go. Succulent. That's a. That better. Sounds like a like. A That's mouth. a better word. Sounds like it would start seeing shit with that. That sounds like a bitch that I would love. Oh, she a succulent. <laughs> 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 and you know Angela. Angela a succulent, bro. It's like she. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cactus succulent whatever fucking cactuses, bro. They are. Um, if cactuses were humans, they would be immune to COVID. Well, they never died, even through yeah. the Ice Age. Yeah. Alligators, cactuses, and roaches. cockroaches. Roaches. Yep. Roaches. Never yeah. died through two Ice Age. That's what they used to say, bro. If there's ever an atomic fallout, the only thing that would be left is share and cockroaches. Yeah. They, <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> share and cockroaches, bro. <laughs> well, they could adapt. They can You know adapt. what I mean? And that's how life is. Everything I grew up adapts. in a house with a lot of roaches, bro. I didn't, didn't. Grow, I didn't grow up from the best. I didn't grow up, you know, with a silver spoon in my mouth. And uh, I remember one time, bro, um, you remember how you would go to the, uh, you know, a little, little older, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, a, and I'm not a young chicken, spring chicken, whatever they call it. But you remember how you go to the grocery store, you put 50 cent in, you get that little fake jewelry that come in the plastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, the and a little plastic bag? No, the little plastic container to have a, it'll be like a, a dome almost. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, bro, I remember one time I caught a cockroach in that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you was in the uh, wrong hood. <laughs> bro, <laughs> I mean, we grew up with a lot of roaches, bro. I had a lot of, bro, at nighttime, bro, you come to my house at nighttime, flick them lights on, <sighs> You ever get bit by one? I got bit by a, a water bug, which a lot of people call cockroaches, but they're a water bug. They're flying cockroaches. Yeah. Oh, great. Now they can fly. Yeah, they can fly the water bugs, bro. You know what? The cockroaches don't bother me. Fuck it. You, know, they don't, you can't kill them motherfuckers. You know, That's one thing. The cockroaches that we are infested with in America are actually German cockroaches. No. Yeah, they're German cockroaches. How the hell do you know that? You're a comedian. I, I'm on that spectrum of the, the type of people that read and research <laughs> type of shit. I didn't know that. No. So, <clears throat> one time I caught one of those cockroaches in one of those little plastic containers that the fake jury came in that you got for 50 cent. And I remember watching on the, the uh, news that cockroaches can't die from radiation. 
So I put the cockroach in the microwave, oh, and I put it on 30 seconds, and that motherfucker did not die. Listen, well, that's how they, that's how <laughs> they survived, man. Bro. Fucking asteroid hits, you got no no Bro. sun, no nothing. I hated flip. cockroaches growing up, dog. Like, if I see a cockroach in my house now, I'll probably burn it down. But you still won't kill it, though. I kill it, but I burn the whole house down. I take all my. You better have like a whole clip and shoot it, ember. <laughs> <laughs> and then bro, you better have some acid in your trunk to put bro, on top of the motherfucker. Maybe it. it dies, bro. If I see a roach right now, I'll burn the whole house down. You know what's the worst in Florida? What is the no seams? Huh? You got no seams because you're in LA right now, right? What a nightmare that is. No, how you, how did you spell it? Uh, uh no seams. No, seam. no I'll, I'll tell you, it, Dave. It's a gnat, but you can barely see the fucker. And they're all over here in Florida. So you can barely see this cocksucker. And they come in like piles. Whenever you have water. Yes, anywhere, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. you can't see the fuckers. Yeah. And they bite you and you itch like a motherfucker yeah. and it goes yeah. away. But they're yeah. annoying as fuck. And you can't see them. Right? Uh, Rob, you've been down here long. I mean, explain what a fucking nose seam is. It's like a gnat. But yeah, it's, it's yeah, so I know small. I know you can't I know. see it. And then it, it, the itch doesn't come to like two hours later yeah and then you're itching the whole night you're like god damn it what the hell and then you're trying to find the fucker where where like the little crew is <laughs> oh, standing water we got a lot of standing water in florida bro yeah and they they attract the water motherfuckers yeah, yeah so you got to get rid of the water yes. so now speaking of your things so you grew up in georgia and you were selling i grew uh, up here you grew up here i thought you grew up then in georgia i moved to georgia okay so you grew up in florida yeah really south okay. florida yeah Okay, so you grew up in South Florida. Down Where at? Georgia, Scott Lakes, Miami Gardens. Miami Gardens, yeah. all right. Yeah. All right. So you're, you're right by, what's the mall? The big mall down there. Was it Aventura? No, Aventura. No, nah, no, the the big one. It's like outside. That shit probably wasn't here when I was there. Yeah. Bro. Okay, so you go from Are you now. talking about the Carol City Swap? That's what I grew I grew up next to the Carol South City Swap. Hill. No, South Hill is a church. What the, what? Rob, what's the mall down? It's all high end. It's, it's kind of Dolphin like, Mall, Aventura no. Mall, Coral Gables. Uh, Coral Gables. Uh, I didn't grow up near Coral Gables. Uh, uh, don't ever take a girl there. You'll be broke as a fucking joke. I'm already broke as a joke. Oh, you'll be you even see more this broke, jury, bro. Okay. Good, <laughs> good. You could, you, could <laughs> you and Tyler could hook me up even more. Go to go. Take her there. Then you'll need me more. As long as she's swiping her card. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Don't hit me with I mean, that I one. I take care of my girl, bro. Nah, you when don't. for ninety nine percent of the time, bro, like yeah. She, now, I, when when a man brings his girl in here like this, yeah, you know, for, you know, I think I've seen her use her credit card around me once, <laughs> twice because I've left my wallet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, and, you paid her back. Yeah, no, and different. No, no, okay. You know, you got to go down. For Oops, she not, she if she paid, down. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to eat pussy for 45 minutes. <laughs> right? Right? And you know what they do? You know what they do? What's that? They wait. You know they can come. Yeah. But they just want to fucking torture they you. They do, down. bro. They, Listen, girls, am, am hold I, that shit. Am I right or wrong? Probably 15 minutes they could come. But you know what? It feels good. And then they fuck it. And you're down there, right? Mm. And you're thinking, man, I already know. Because, you, right. you know, it gets a little bit. And. Now we're like at, you know, you kind of glance. You might have a yeah, clock in the bedroom. Possibly. 25 minutes. What the fuck you doing? And you're still down there, right? <laughs> but, but as a man, you got to finish the motherfucking you job, right? You got to finish right? the job. And hypothetically speaking, maybe your girl, I don't know. She'll keep your ass down there for 45 minutes. And then what happens is when you start going a little bit slower, she knows, yeah. all right, now I got to let yeah. this out. After this, 45 fucking minutes. Sure. They like that shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they like it, bro. Yeah. That, bro, you know what else I found out women do? What? They hold their pee to nut harder. Is that true? Why? I don't know why they do it, bro. They hold their pee to nut harder. Do you know that, Rob? No. T t Women hold their pee to nut harder, bro. We need to get... Can you explain that? <laughs> come on the mic, man. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, come on the mic. Come, come on the mic. Come, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'd like to know. They hold their pee... To come hard. Yes, bro. When I found that shit out, I'm like, stop. You're good. Yeah, come on. It feels like. I'm sorry, miss. I always call you miss. What, what's your first name? Taylor. It's Taylor. Taylor. You like Tyler. All right, explain this to me. It's like an orgasm, so I'll hold my pee. He's like, you, he's like, you never pee, and I'm like, I do pee, but you know, <laughs> I hold it because it feels like. When they pee, it feels like climaxing. Yes, that's crazy, right? Crazy. Yeah. So you so. When he's fucking you and licking your pussy, you hold your pee so you have a better orgasm? Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah. And then I'll say, I have to pee. I don't, I, you'll, I'll say, I have so to pee. So aren't you worried Midway. you're going to like pee yourself? <laughs> kind of. Like, so that's why he's like, pee, squirt, but it's like, hmm. 
Now that's another question. So when these brawls squirt, right? That's piss. No, it's not. It is. No. It's like ten percent pee. It is. Yeah. The other nah, it's like... squirt though. <laughs> there, there's pee in there. A little bit, like ten percent. Ah, fuck it. Ten percent. I'll take the ninety percent. If your girl only pees like three times a day, like her, when she's peeing, she's <laughs> orgasming. Yeah, for real. It feels great, yeah, uh, bro. That's crazy, right? With all due respect, I doubt he's gonna leave that pussy. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're because they they're they're far and few between. Yeah. <laughs> with all due respect, really, you hold your pee, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. If guys could do that, we'd be holding our pee all day. I can't. You don't have to. <laughs> shit. Women are powerful. Yo, Very. yo, Rob, Tyler. If we could hold our pee and bust it, bust it better than <laughs> shit, I wouldn't piss all day. I'd drink 10 monsters and fucking heads in my face, right? Bruh. Rob, bro. have you ever heard that? Bro, I, that fu- I think I, I found that, that shit out at the end see, of last see, year. Wow. See, you guys know this shit. See, yeah. we don't know this shit. That's, I'm going to go home now and say, when was the last time you peed today? <laughs> <laughs> go pee. Let me see what yeah, yeah, I'm really yeah, working yeah. with. No, no. He no, was don't pee. Not to pee. Don't, oh, don't pee. Yeah, I'm going to see what time the last time she peed at when I get home. Let's make her drink a whole bunch of water right now. Yeah. So you get yes, I like it. That bladder's full. Okay. I, I still don't understand it, but I'll take your advice. But I mean, what is it? We're all born with clits at first. What do you mean? At first, we're all born with a clitoris. And then if you're a man, it develops into a dick. Oh. So we got like mini dicks and then we become, I mean, well, if you're you. The head of your dick is a clitoris. <laughs> I. Okay, so I have a clitoris head. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's why you can change your what if you want to be a girl now. You were a girl before, so now you can just change easy, right? You were a girl before. Now Again, you want to be a girl. before that would ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm kind of jealous of women because, like, you know, like when you eating a girl out and how they look like grabbing and fingers. Uh, yeah, it never feels that good. No, with us, it's only at the end. <laughs> yes, right. We only right. get about five, six seconds, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, right. Rob, yes, Rob. we only get like the last but 10, see, 12 seconds. But see, they get it the whole time. See, us, right? Like, like we hold because we know too too many men. That's why women back. should not make as much as men. I agree with you. <laughs> yes, yeah, bro. Woman stays home, takes care of kids, cooks, cleans, and fucks. I don't want her to work. I will never let. My one more. Never. Never. Because happen. I think taking care of a family like, is a full time job. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, it is. Yeah. But if she's got like a really good talent, sure. I mean, you know, you go do it. But in general speaking, like Rob's got a wife. This His wife can cut hair like a motherfucker. Yeah. So she's got that talent. She can fade me up. I don't know. She's, she's, she's I'll tell you off camera who she does. The best oh. of the best. Oh, shit. But in that situation, okay, sure. Hey, baby. I get right. rid of I'm not saying Rob said this. Right. I'm saying this. Right. Hey, you're out the door for eight hours, and you bring home a little bit of cash. Right. <laughs> you going? Rob didn't say that. I said that. You go eight hours. You bring home a stack. I ain't complaining. Hell no. <laughs> I keep going. Fuck. I it. ain't complaining. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. hey, you're dealing with heavy hitters. So now you used to. So you grew up in um, Florida. Yeah. Right. Then you end up. But I kind of developed my personality in Macon. Like in Macon, Georgia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you were doing, uh, which I used to buy, I was telling you before, me and my friend Franco would go to mm-hmm. Atlantic City, and everybody, you know, we had no money. You right. Know, we're from Italy, so we had no money. We had a couple bucks. We all wanted the gold chains like yeah. everybody else. And, ah, this is real, 100%. You know, we got 32 bucks. We spent 32 on this shit. Next thing I know, I'm fucking green at my neck. Probably you fucking selling it to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, Tell me about that. What happened with that? So me and my boy said, uh, <clears throat> Macon is a country town, maybe like hundred thousand at max, hundred thousand people, bro. Bibb County. So me and my boy would go up to Atlanta. I think I was like eighteen, nineteen, right before I moved to LA. Like, bro, moving to LA actually saved my life. I was on a path of. Down, downward tear. Uh, bullshit, bro. You know, years in prison. And I'll tell you the story about said after. So um, me and him would go to a, a Atlanta. I think it was called Vermelli, whatever the fuck it's called, where it's like silver plated. I mean, silver, but then gold plated. Yeah, they, they so, paint. They, yeah, so they coat it. it. When they did. So the only test they did in Macon, because I remember uh, I had, uh, I think I had broke up with a chick and she had a gold chain. And I remember the dude, the only test that he did was a magnet test to make sure that it's not like 
if it picked up, then he didn't buy it. He was like, oh, fuck that. I'm not buying that shit. So when we went to Atlanta, and he was like, oh, yeah, this is Vermelli. We can't even, you can't even tell it's not gold. Like, a light bulb clipped in my head. I'm like, said, we need to get, like, two, three hundred dollars worth of this shit. We can go make fifteen hundred. <clears throat> so we bought a whole bunch. And we would just go to pawn shops and make it like, man, I bought this shit. Man, I can't, you know, give him a nice story. Man, I bought this fucking chain, bro. I don't know why I bought it. I can't even afford it. I need to put gas in my car. Can't pay my motherfucking yeah, rent, Yeah, I, I can't right? pay my rent, man. I need to sell this chain, bro. So they, they take the magnet out and wipe it over it. Oh, okay. And then do a little scrape test. And, you know, it's gold plated. So, and then we'd be cashing out like $400 for a chain we paid. 50 bucks for it maybe and we did that shit at maybe like that's the only way I was making money so we did that maybe at like 50, 60 pawn shops in Macon and surrounding counties, country, you know what I'm saying they don't really do too much but it's like, is it really hurting them because they just pass it off to the next person and if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it I mean that, that was my theory before I like brightened up I was like, man, you know, we bought this shit. Let's let's. Now, how did you get caught, or your buddy, your friend got caught? I mean, what what? I mean, what is even the fucking charge? So he got caught at um, it was a uh, he got caught because of greed. Mm. I think he took. Shocker. So I would just do like a, a necklace and a bracelet combo. Like, bro, I brought this. I bought this for seven hundred dollars, man. If I can get three hundred. Or two fifty, I'll be good, man. I just need to. And you paid fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Forty fifty bucks at the swap meet in Atlanta. So I'd be like, man, if I can get two hundred, three hundred, I'll be good, man. You know what I'm saying? And he'd be like, eh, do you want? What he say? You want a pawn or you want a loan? I'd be like, pawn, man. I just want to be done with it. I don't want it, man. I don't even want to buy no more jewelry. So that's how I would do it. I do the chain and the. The bracelet, but this motherfucker took like seven, eight necklaces at one time, trying to get like a thousand dollars, and it's, that's when he fucked up. Yeah, it's like bro, greed, greed. You, you were pacing it, so it could have been long term. But then you come in with a pile of shit. I mean, we're talking about like oh seven, oh eight when yeah. I was a kid. So two hundred dollars per week is a lot of money for a yeah. kid. Yeah, and I don't got no rent. You know, what I'm like, yeah, bro, shit. Two hundred dollars last me three weeks. Yeah, you know, like bro, it was. It was twenty dollars to fill up my truck. You know what I'm saying, bro. I, I, my favorite restaurant I used to take girls out to eat was Carabas. I love Carabas. Car- <sighs> you ever ate Carabas, man? Yeah. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I, I know. I know the owner. That, so, that's that's for, even though they franchised the the guy behind it all, he is really. So at the time, food. I was too young to drink. So if me and a girl went, it was like forty two dollars. Yeah. So that's all I needed. Carabas money. That's all I need. And good food too. Their food's bro, great, amazing. Fresh. The Fresh. chicken marsala, dude. That's what I. I can't eat. I, can't, <laughs> I I'm allergic to mushrooms. Uh-huh. It only happened when I was like 25 because my mom used to cook it all the time, and I was fine. All of a sudden, fucking 25, 26, I'm out. I get the chicken in my throat. Cl- like I'd have to have you fucking cut me, fucking bro. Me. That's what happened to me with shellfish. Me too. I ate shellfish yeah. my whole. I ate shellfish my whole life. I'm like 21, 22. I eat some shellfish, and my throat. I'm like, <coughs> yeah, it starts like closing up. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, it's hot in here, bro. Like, let me yeah. loosen my collar. And listen, my ex hated me. I'm thinking, God damn, she really does hate me. She wants to put a motherfucking <laughs> curse on me. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, what the? I mean, you could feel it. Yeah, you can't, like swallow. It's the like, worst. Fuck. And you know, we are like, we could fuck people up, but when we get sick, we're little bitches. You know? Do you, st- do you still eat it? I still. My wife yells at me. I take Benadryl before. But I did it when I was home a few weeks ago, and I, I looked like I looked like. Remember the movie Will Smith Hitch, where he oh, like, yeah. he, like he was, scratches he was, his, oh, his yeah, eyes yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. That was me it. like last week. And my <laughs> wife's like, "You're gonna fucking die one of these days. Your throat's gonna seal up." I'm like, "Well, as long as I enjoyed it, I mean, it was good." I mean, <laughs> I don't eat shellfish, but she eats shellfish, and then I mean, I don't think twice about kissing her. <laughs> yeah. I have no comment to that. <laughs> I'll, she'll eat shellfish Like she ate shrimp today When we were on the beach She ate shrimp You and can't I, eat shrimp? Bro I can't eat no shit I, I probably can now Because she kissed me I don't itch or nothing Wow so even shrimp Would make you itch? Any sh- Anything So it's not It's not the 
It's not the uh, exact like thing. So like it's, it's not the, just it's the iodine in the shell. Iodine. So whether it's clams or can I can eat calamari. Lobster? I can eat calamari. Yeah, I can see that. But you can't eat lobster. Really. No. Yeah, that sucks, man. You can't get surf and turf. That sucks for you. But I can do the turf. <laughs> <laughs> I can't surf, but I can turf, baby. Yeah, I can't surf either. Believe me, we fall off that shit. Yeah. So Wait, you know what? I could jump like you. Yeah, I can probably. Jump. I'm I'm probably weak right now, bro. I ain't, you could still jump higher than me. I probably maybe can. You guys can sing, dance, yeah, oh, shit, fuck, you know. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys got gifted, but you know. Yeah. So, um, with the necklaces, bro. So, um, when I knew I needed to get out of making, bro, and because uh, I I was doing my comedy thing like since I was like 17, I was theatrical in the the, the theater community. Um, so, you know, a lot of white people already knew me from the theater community. So, um, I think I'm like 20. Said's my boy, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though he was a career criminal, like he went to prison at like 14 for armed robbery. You know what I'm saying? And he was older than me. So said probably like 40 right now. I'm like 20. He like 30 at the time. So, uh, I'm dating this girl. Um, she's a lesbian now. <laughs> but uh <laughs> maybe <laughs> but i'm dating this girl and uh said calls me he's like hey bro i need you to uh take me to run a play you know you know what running a play is like we need to do something right quick yeah and i'm like i right, bet i'd be there and my girl at the time was right there and she's like you ain't going no motherfucking where you been with this motherfucker all week all y'all do is hang out you ain't spend no time with my ass if you go run this play with him we done. So I'm like, shit. And I think he wanted me to take him like at, scoop him like at six. He lived on the south side. I lived on the north side. And uh, she lived on the west side. And I was at her crib. So um, it's like six o'clock. And I'm like, uh, am I going to be, <laughs> <am I better? laughs> Because I know if I run a play with said, like, I'm going to, you know, come back with 40, 50 bucks. So it's like, Shardy, you ain't going to be tripping when I be like, all right, let's go. What, what we going? We going to the movies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 40 dollars was a lot of money back then. What we going for? Movies? You get your shrimp fried rice, you know what I'm saying? So uh, she's like, you're not going. If you go, we're done. So I, t I text said, I'm like, bro, my bad, dog. Like, shawty tripping. I can't make it. Whatever, whatever. I don't hear back from said for hours. Like, I don't hear back from him at all. And so, like, I text him, like, at 9 or 10. I'm like, bro, like, dog, I'm sorry, bro. Like, my girl was really tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't make it, man. I remember the phone I had. I had a sidekick slide, the one that slid. Yeah, up. I have one too. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, you know, in my head, I'm like, damn, man, my best friend, like, damn, I can't even, you know, like, my best friend don't stop fucking with me over a chick. Like, it's always, you know, bros over hoes. It so, should be bros over hoes, right? Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't. should be bros over <clears throat> hoes, but it always ends up being hoes over, over bros. Oh, God, it always does. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, man, you know, hoes over bros, I guess it, man, right now. So it's like 11 o'clock. The 11 o'clock news comes on, bro. Me and her are laying in her bed. I didn't have an apartment at the time. She did. She was a little older than me. This don't sound good. The 11 o'clock news comes on. 13 WMAZ, Why Reward News, blah, blah, blah. Cedric Denard. And I'm like. And then they had his picture. And then they went into the story. So what I was supposed to do, the play that we was going to run, I was going to drive him to sell a phone. I remember the phone. The, he asked me to buy it. It was a BlackBerry Curve. And so the play that I was going to run him to do was to drive him to sell a phone. But I didn't know that he took a gun with him and he was going to rob the guy for the money and still keep the phone. So had I went in the state of Georgia, I would have been an accomplice to that. And they charge you just like they charge they him. They charge him yep. just like they charge him, bro. And who knows what would have happened, like, bro, like, in the state of Georgia, if somebody dies during, while you're admit, while you're doing a crime, you get charged with that murder. Yeah, that, that's how it is now. Like, so, like, say I'm in the car with you, right? I don't, you tell me, we're, we're just going out to have a good time. I don't know what the fuck you're up to, but you got a gun in the glove compartment on your side, and you go take somebody out. I get first degree just like you do because I'm with you. Now, how, what am I supposed to do? Fucking search you every time you get in, my, in the car right, or, or exactly. in your car? I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Now, just because I'm with you, I got no idea what you're up to. 
I get first degree murder just like you. It used to be maybe a conspiracy mm -hmm. or nothing. Now, with this bullshit, now just because I'm in the fucking car, you know, and it's ridiculous because what are you going to do? Pass somebody down? <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, I didn't shoot nobody. You did. Right. Why the fuck am I getting hit with it? But, so, you know, it's just the way it's. So she saved my life, bro. And, uh, you know, because he did. I probably would have got off with a lesser charge, but still I would have been a felon. Yeah. Because he just got out of jail like I'm thirty and he just got out of jail like two years ago. And that's when I was nineteen, bro. And at that time I was what like, he got ten? He got like ten. Ten. And I actually probably got twelve because you were nineteen with good time, yeah. He probably did ten or eleven. Yeah. And so I was like, Man, I gotta go. Yeah. I got to leave. Like Macon is not where I'm supposed to be. I was like, bro, cause I was just doing too much, man. I was just for no reason, bro. Come, I came from a good house. She's met my parents. My, my well, you went. You went to private school. <clears throat> I went to private school. Yeah. I was shocked by that. That's yeah. funny that a comedian went to private school. I went to private school for did, like. Did you like that? So. Um, did you have to dress like a kind of interesting? So from like kindergarten to eighth grade, I went to private school. Did you uh, like it? It was all right. I'm smart. You know, I'm pretty intelligent. Um, I got know, a question for you about Catholic this. private school. Ooh. Now, did that fuck up your, like, social skills by being in a private school? That's probably why I don't like people now. Yeah. No, I don't like people. Either. I like animals. Yeah. I like animals. I like animals. I want a tiger, bro. A tiger. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. I had, I had a monkey. Really? Yeah. I, want my, one. I had a monkey when I was in Jersey, and the fucking neighbor called it. That, other than my mom passing away, that fucked me up. My mm. monkey was cool, but you can only have them for so long because they get crazy. They get too strong. Yeah, like well, a chimpanzee, you can only keep them for like four years. I, I had a chimp. I mean, he he was big, but I built a big thing out back for him. You know, but once they're like, when the bitch called on me, he was about to turn five, and he he was starting to get too strong because they're meant to be in the wild. Right. You know what I mean? But I was attached to him because it was like a dog. You know what I mean? But more like human like. So, like, you're having a bad day, you know, they come up, you know, and monkeys are, they're, like, this close to us. Yeah. A yeah. crumb was on the two away, no, right? No, they really are. Yeah. And, you know, like, like I, I, I my, my, mon my monkey's name was Sal. Mm -hmm. And I would literally say to him, Sal, go get me a monster drink. He'd jump over the fence and shit because I had a dog, you know, he was cool with the dog. And he knew monster. He'd bring me a monster and shit and then sit and we had this it was really funny with with chimpanzees are uh -huh. funny right so once they they're like about two they start to like understand shit mm. and and they know like if if i if he goes and gets me like a monster drink or a bottle of water then he'll want to sit on the couch and take the controller and they turn on the fucking channel that they like and shit it's it's amazing to see in person no it was fucking crazy man and he'd sit there and this fucking motherfucker i didn't care at the time this was a mm. long time ago he got on to say, I, I don't smoke anymore, I vape, but I used to smoke. Mm -hmm. And this fucking monkey would go through four four or five packs of Marlboro Reds. <laughs> He'd have one in this hand and one in this hand, <laughs> right? And then I taught him how to put one in his ear and shit because I'd have to get up. You know what I mean? So he'd have one in this ear, one in it. And, he, and then the fucking nutcase would go, he would have two, like this watching his TV show. You know what he liked? You're going to die. Barney. The purple fucking thing. I love you. This fucking, if I had Barney on and a Budweiser for him, he was cool as fuck. He smoked. No, Rob, he would he would chain smoke one after another with a Budweiser and hands like this and smash the fucking beer can and just throw it. <laughs> and I'd say, Sal, go pick it up. And he'd pick it up, put it in the trash can, and then he'd stand there like this. Waiting to get another one because I wouldn't let him get too drunk. I shouldn't be saying this, but <laughs> no. But he was cool. As fuck. Peter gonna shut your ass. And, down. and then as soon as as soon as I would walk in the house, you know, what I mean, he knew not to go in the refrigerator and shit. He he give me that look, and I knew what he wanted: more cigarettes and beers. And I knew it would be a rough night. I was single at the time. My, you know, the girl That's I was with, we were fighting. As fuck. Yeah, you, I had to have four packs a day for this fucker, and Budweiser. Expensive ass chimp, bro. But I'll tell you what. The uh, I want a spider monkey. Yeah. What the fuck? I don't know what that. They're one. small. He yeah. can't kill me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had a chimpanzee. I'm telling you, once they're about four, they're strong as a motherfucker. They'll fuck your ass up. Then he started fucking with my shit, and it was time for him to go. But I wanted to do. But I wanted to put him in. I wanted him to the chimp rescue in Tampa. 
No, I was I was <clears> in Jersey, but I I wanted them to put him back in the wild where he belongs, but slowly uh-huh. because he was with me for four and a half years, right. you know. So I wanted him to slowly go back into society, just like they're doing, like we were talking before, with the crack law. Right. They're taking guys, letting them out, and just throwing them out into the fucking wild. You know, well these guys don't know what the fuck to do. They just been right. in fifteen years. They should have gone from the jail to the halfway house understand life as it is now and then put them into society so when i had my monkey i wanted personally he wasn't ready yet to go i had another couple months with him before he was going to get turned into a terror i wanted to give him to the right people and slowly adapt him to wildlife you know what i mean then he's that's what they're meant to be you know so it was fucked up but whatever but a monkey's cool though yeah. You would love it, man. You would love it. They jump on your shoulder and shit. I want a tiger so bad. Michael Jackson's monkey, um, Bubbles, he's so alive. He's in Tampa, right? Yeah. No, he's yeah. right outside of Orlando. Okay. Tyson had, Tyson had a fucking tiger. Tyson had a tiger, said it was the worst decision he ever made in his life. Yeah. And that's a guy that you'd never want to ride hook from. And he beat the fuck out of Roy Jones. He, <laughs> he just let that go so he that let, they could have a rematch. Slide, bro. Did you watch it? Me yeah. and Rob watched it. He, right, he, was, he was holding back. He didn't want to hurt Roy Jones, yeah. bro. And Roy Jones is a Florida boy. So. Third round, he could have whacked. He could have yeah. ended it. I watched it. I was like, Tyson, hold him back. I heard they're going to do a Holyfield Tyson. You think so? <sighs> Damn. Tyson, Tyson's one of those humans who feed off of that. So it's like he's a, he's a tiger, you know? You think they'll do it? Yeah. Holyfield need the money. You think Tyson will hit him? I, I mean, hope hit so. him. I hope so. Because, I mean, he clocked Jones a couple <clears throat> times. We we saw, what, the last three rounds? He, I mean, he was barely standing. And remember we saw that, Rob? Mike hit him with that one in, like, the – what was it, fifth round? Yeah. I mean, he hit him and almost – and I saw Tyson back up because he wanted the money. Right. You know what I mean? They but made millions off of that. Millions. And, yo, Roy was barely standing. I got, <laughs> And I like Roy, you know? Roy. Roy, pound for pound, best hands I've ever seen. Not better than Floyd. Not better Floyd than didn't Floyd. have hands, though, defense. Yeah, but when he, but he's a bo- he's a boxer. Floyd's a boxer. Floyd's the type of boxer who you want to be. You take you don't take the damage, and you still be the person by pa 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 pa. Yeah, like that. If I was a boxer, I would have studied. I would if I was a boxer, I studied Floyd. Like yeah, you may. Yeah, it's a boring fight because it's not a knockout. Right, but he's a professional. And he's boxer. gonna be sharp for the rest of his life. You're not. I, I've only <laughs> seen him get. What were we talking about with the one guy? Sugar. What, yeah, Sugar. Uh, that's Sugar the only Shane Mosley. That's the only and one Zab I've ever Judah. seen actually hit him. And Zab Judah. Zab Judah caught him with yeah. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's two hits yeah. in, what, 20 years? Right. I Other than those two, can mm-hmm. you name one other time no. he got clocked? Bro, he made Canelo look like he never boxed before. Dude, he dogged him. Man. Dogged him. Like, and everybody thought, like, you know, Canelo was going to come with that, yeah. that you yeah. know, hit him back with the jab. Right. Floyd played him like a motherfucker and just beat him slowly. My favorite boxer is uh, Grenadier Glovkin. Really? Yeah. You know who I liked? You, you probably know him. Ran into him. I liked Lennox Lewis until he yeah. went into the Hollywood and it fucked them all up. <laughs> he had that fucking jab, man. You yeah. couldn't hit him. He was long, bro. London. London fighter. London. Right? London. Yeah, yeah. 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 London remember, remember he would jab. Yeah. Left jab. Jab I, your ass. He jab your long. ass to death. <laughs> remember? And Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. How about him? That's Bernard right. Hopkins is an alien, bro. <clears throat> Beast. Then he started fighting in prison. Yeah, yeah. That's how he got. Yeah, I, I, he wants to fight again. Nah, bro, because that last dude knocked him out the ring. He don't. He don't need to fight no yeah, more, he, bro. He he's got his career. Yeah. You know, like let it be an announcer. It's like yeah. when that dude knocked you out of the ring, bro. That was a. But yo, in his prime, how about him, man? You don't want it. That uppercut from Bernard Hopkins, dog. You know what would have been a good fight when Tyson in his prime with Bernard in his prime. Mm. I think Tyson would have won. Yeah. But I think. Tyson just had that stopping power, bro. Well, once the Italian guy left him, he got all fucked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Italian guy kept. Was it Customato? Cu- yeah, cu- Customato. 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 Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Customato. He kept him in line, yeah. man. You don't want that. How much? We did this before. How much would ha- somebody have to pay you to f- to take a right from Mike Tyson in right. his prime? Right. In his prime, five mil. Five mil. How much would you take, Rob? What did I say the last time? I think I, it was I, ten million. I'd take it. No, you said lower. I said lower. Nuts. I just said I'd run around the ring and not, as much as I could fast. I would run, just, just run around. I'd, I'd fight. I'd fight Tyson in his prime, two two minute rounds for five mil. You're gonna get brain damage. No, 
I'm be, what he you said, think run? you could take a hit from Mike Tyson? I'm a run. I'm a grab. <laughs> <laughs> Just fall the I'm fuck over. I'm gonna be so close that he can't really like draw back. I'm, <laughs> I'm a smother. Him. I'm a smother. Him, bro. <laughs> you know, I, I would say, Mike, hey, look, can we just talk about this? All right, we already know what's gonna happen. You're getting a lot of money. Just don't go all the way. You know, give me like half of the punch. I think I'd rather get hit by Mike Tyson than Deontay Wilder. Mm. Because his punches be looking like they put people in seizure, seizure, seizures. What would you rather have, Rob? That boy can hit. It's tough. Um, uh, I'd just go Deontay. I don't, I, in Mike Tyson in his prime, I would not want to get by Mike nah, Tyson in his prime. Nah, no, you're right. No way. Nah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll take it. I'd be him. brain dead. Man, fucking Deontay Wilder beat my favorite fighter, Cuban fighter Luis Ortiz. He didn't beat him. He rocked him. <sighs> I was so mad. Luis Ortiz in the first fight actually rocked Deontay Wilder. To me, Luis Ortiz was the first boxer to expose Deontay Wilder. I think he underestimated what he was up against. Who, Deontay Wilder? Yeah. Oh, and, and the ref saved Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Because Luis, or, Luis Ortiz had him in the, And he fights out of Miami. You know, Miami. You know what I'm saying? That was and, bullshit. Yeah, you know it was, it was bullshit. That's the ref, what The ref bullshit. saved him. But, you know, I like uh, Tyson Fury a lot too, bro. Yeah. Deontay Wilder can't beat him never. No. I agree. no. That's the motherfucker who grew up bare knuckle fighting yeah <laughs> you're not gonna beat this what do you think about uh connor you think he'll come back strong he's gonna get his ass whooped i think so <laughs> I, think, I, I think he's done <clears throat> he should be but he's still young i heard yeah but the when, other guy is older yeah but but when you have a break like that you're not talking about boxing with right. the hands like right. you can come back with yeah, the NBA. You're kicking and shit. when you're playing that kick game that that leg's never I their mean, ankle or yeah. whatever they're trying to play it off as, that's never going to be the My thing. good buddy, Brendan Schaub, who was a UFC fighter, said that injury at minimum is a year. That's at minimum. Minimum. And he was just in Orlando. I saw him. He was on the TV. He was in Orlando, Universal Studios, walking around with his crutches and shit. You know, just trying to make a statement for the public. Connor don't have that dog in him no more. He got too much money. And now people know that injury. It's yeah. It's, it's I'm going. Yeah. Right. If I yeah, get him right. on the mat, I'm yeah, going right at it. That's a good point. I'm going right at it. So now you know where we. You know, like I used to box, and I always knew, like if somebody's guarding right here, that's the because when I boxed, I would guard right here because it's my weak spot. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, you jab at the body. Anybody that can box, you hit the body. What's your fighting weight like? One forty, one thirty-five? No, I was one one forty-five. Okay. Yeah, one forty-five, and then I went to uh, when I went to New York and got the Golden Gloves. I was no, I, I had to get heavier. I was one seventy in mm -hmm. New York. I got Golden Gloves in New York. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, and I, I but I, it went a lot of rounds, and I took a lot of hits. But you know, I'm I'm crazy. How does it feel when you get rocked? How um, does that, is everything slow and it's like being drunk? You you get rocked. And, like, the body, you get, like, adrenaline. You know what I mean? So, like, you, it dazes you, and then, like, you know, you're you're kind of, like, holding to get to the round, and you just need, like, some cold water and a drink, and you spit it out, and then your body kicks in adrenaline, so it doesn't hit you right away. So a couple times I got hit really hard, and, you know, medically I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I had a concussion. Mm. But the body takes over, and it, it just adjusts like back in the old days when you're fighting a tiger, right, right? you know right. what I'm saying? And at the moment, the adrenaline kicks in and you're still there. So at that point, like I, I remember a couple of tough fights, you don't really feel it anymore because you're already fucked up, mm -hmm. but you still can concentrate. But like the punches, you can like just take them on blast because it's like the you become numb kind of. Gotcha. And then, but you're still aware. Mm. But then like, once the fight's over and the adrenaline's gone, you're uh, hurting. Hurt. Like football, yeah. I used to, yeah, I mean, you got I a headache for days. Laying motherfuckers out, and then, like, after the game, I'm like, shit, bro. Like, I'm getting home. Like, damn, my back hurt. I, I never went down, Dave. I, I never oh, went nice. down. No, I never went down. But I took a lot of fucking hits. But, I, but when I would take the hits, I would come back for the next round, you know, a little water on my face, the wax so that the glove would slip. Right. And then I would just go after the body. And what happens is when you go after the body, they bend down. And then Catch it, with the uppercut? I'm, well, I'm waiting for the guy to move his hand. Because that where, was Tyson's, the body, the right hook yeah, to the body, then the uppercut. Because once you, because <clears throat> every time I won, I keep hitting them ribs. Mm. Ri you can throw all the face right. shots you want. Right. Somebody's got a good draw, you're not going to knock them. Right, out. right. But the body, them ribs, yeah. you hit that hard. Fragile. <laughs> you're you're going to bend eventually. Right. Right. And you're gonna, and you got about two seconds, if that, maybe a millisecond, where they move that weak spot because you hit them right in the in the body, and then you hit them there, 
they drop like it don't the bigger they are the, the faster they fall mm. one of my uh another boxer who i love to see fight but he has a fucking glass jaw is amir khan yeah glass jaw bro yeah, he, he got good hands but he can't take a fucking punch yeah there's nothing you can do to strengthen your jaw huh? well he doesn't know where to guard mm. his trainer sucks because like my trainer i'm sure tyson all these other people I'm, i mean i was just golden gloves in the states and shit you know but i learned like my weak spot like i have a scar here because i got hit you know and my weak spots right here so i whether it's a street fight or a boxing, I know where it's at. You can hit me anywhere. You could hit me as hard as you can right in the forehead. It doesn't even phase me. All right. But you get me here, I'm down. So I knew no matter how many body punches, never – my coach taught me. And when I would spar, I'd spar of getting hit right there and right. making and body shots and making sure that this was always covered. Gotcha. Because that was my weak spot. So in boxing, like real, like Floyd has that down to a That pack. roll, that shoulder, bro. Yeah. He don't he – don't, yeah. Crazy, right? Boxing isn't the way it used to be. Though, no. So. Floyd got a good chin, though. People don't realize that. He takes some punches. He takes not a lot, but he's taking, like we said earlier, he's taking some good punches. Well, I'll tell you what, that one that Sugar gave him. <laughs> it, I, I, he was messed up. He grabbed that arm. He was holding yeah. on. Yeah, that one yeah. hurt him, believe yeah. me. That, yeah. That's probably why he's going to spend in fucking half a fucking billion in three days. I was uh, at the Pacquiao Mayweather fight, but I was sitting so far back. I wish I wouldn't have bought them tickets. Do you think Pacquiao really had a fucked up shoulder? No. I don't think so. Either. Do you, Rob? No. I think Floyd. Pacquiao was trying his hardest. Yeah, because he was swinging and just missing. Mm -hmm. You can't, am I right or wrong? You can't swing like that if you got a fucked up shoulder. No, no way. I mean, you could shoot all the cortisone in there you want. Right. Right? Yeah. We're, uh, we're going to be in Houston Saturday watching Derek Lewis. You think you'll move to fucking Texas? Who? You. Mm. Rogan's opening the, the comedy. Drive. I got property in Georgia, bro. I'm probably. You want to go back to Georgia? Well, I mean, the part I'm at, bro, I'm about to build me a lake with a small cabin on it. There you go. Yeah, but what are you going to do in Georgia? Fish. We relax in Georgia. We relax. In, bro, we be on the boat. We be relaxing in Georgia. Bro. What are you going to do? Sell fish? No, but bro, can't even eat fish. Let me know. No, I can eat fish. I can't <laughs> eat shellfish. Let me know when you want to come to Georgia, bro. Let me know when you want to come. Not Atlanta. Let me know when you want to come to the country. I want to see Usher in Atlanta. Yeah, but see. let me know when you want to come to the country. It's we relax. Some catfish. We, yeah. Uh, see, there we go. We eat good food. We relax. We get on the boat. The house. We live on a. So my fa my grandmother bought a whole bunch of acreage a long time ago, and she gave it all to her grandkids and great grandkids. So like, bro, we live on a street where it's nothing but family houses. And my mom's house is on like four acres. So in the hey, back, she's got there's, four acres? yeah, there's she's deer good. and bro, it's just so weird. you go on the porch, you'll hear nothing. You'll hear no, 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 no cars, no hell. It's so relaxing. Bro. But like, this is how you're going to know we got the same jeans. I ain't going no motherfucking tent. No, you I ain't pay going me no all tent. you want. I don't do no tent. RV. 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 RV at minimum. <laughs> I'm not I ain't doing no tent, no bugs. I ain't, my luck, my fucking bear will come again. I bro, ain't doing I, that shit. But I'll be out there with Balenciaga track shoes on, talking about some camping. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll do five star camping. But I ain't doing no motherfucking like tent shit with, Give me a with, RV with, with I'm the not, light. I'm no, not no. sleeping in no tent, bro. I'm nah. not building no fire. Like, <laughs> it's not a fire. I can't swing a hammer. <laughs> no. Ask Rob. Rob, can I swing a hammer? No. Bro, I don't. Before I'm, you came in, I knocked all this shit down by my. He was on vacation, the asshole. He's not allowed on vacation anymore. Tell him you're going to beat him up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. He I'm, comes in. I'm a wrestler, bro. I'm not a curtain. I'm not a striker. Down. I'm a wrestler. Uh, yeah, you could take me down. Yeah, I'm, I'm a enough. wrestler, bro. I had some jitsu guys in. Mm. And remember, uh, w uh, really nice guy. This guy was what? 140 pounds soaking wet. He was the champion. Mauricio or something, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, Marcelo. Marcelo. He was a champion. Dave, the guy was soaking wet, what, 140? Yeah, not big at all. And then, I don't you were the world champion and then watched a couple of videos. Bro. Bro. I've, I've, I've uh, rolled with some jujitsu guys. Fuck that. So here's the thing, bro. And sports like wrestling, jujitsu, the smaller, like when I. When I battle somebody, when I wrestle somebody my size, it's easy. When I wrestle somebody like that's long, like Tyler with them skinny arms that can slip their arm under my neck and they start choking me right. out. Dead. And you can't really grab them. So, and I, I'm big and, you know, like. Because they slip right out. They of slip head. right out and then they grab you and it's like, fuck. It's over. It's over with. Do you ever no. go against Eddie Bravo? No. Uh, 
my uh, wrestling coach was uh damn what was his name? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh shit. That's hard. Wrestling's a hard fucking sport, man. The little guys got like that dog in them for some reason. They just don't stop. They like, don't stop. God and damn and it, you get can't away from me. And I know. Come man, what is his coming. name? Yo, when I was boxing at one forty, man, they were quick as fucking. Really hard to fucking get points on because they were so quick. Raul, there you go. Raul. Yeah, we got a couple of. Uh, he's a he's he's wrestled like in Thailand and shit. That's a guy. He's pretty good. The the brown guy. Yeah. Is he from Brazil? Is that on no, your Instagram? He's Mex- That's on his Instagram. Oh, okay. I think I took my wrestling video off that me and him had. Yeah, wrestling is a tough sport, man. That weight shit's crazy. You got to really go down to the way, like really starve yourself, right? Yeah, like, yeah, when I wrestled in high school and shit, yeah. But, uh, cat, so I do catch wrestling. That's what it's called. Catch wrestling? What's that? C A T C H. So it's kind of like uh, Olympic wrestling with submissions. Oh, okay. So you, you can sit like when I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. Right? Wow. So I don't got I can pin you, but I can also submit you like in an arm bar, a headlock, a choke, uh, a toe hold, a I'm leg. Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm yeah, dead. I know, I know I, a few. Uh, you want a box? We could box. But that shit, I'm, bro, I, it's I, over. It yeah. would take you two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, the easy, so I ain't taught her shit yet, but I be wrestling her all the time. <laughs> but the way you, it's so easy, bro. The way you prevent being choked out is just put your chin to your chest. That's how you prevent. Yeah, but what about all the other shit, man? Well, that's the only thing I'm worried about. Break my arm, but don't choke me out. Because when I when you choke me out, I'm at your mercy. I I'm black. No, the- I want nothing to do with none of that. I'll stay with the gloves. <laughs> I, I don't want no broken arm. I don't. Want, I haven't had a broken bone in my life. Bro- I don't break my arm, but I I I rather you break my leg, my arm. I don't want to broke be, your leg. No, I'd rather you. Oh, I'd rather. I don't want to be choked out at all. That's for you. You can wrestle. <laughs> I, I'll stick to the box. I love I, wrestling, man. You like I love it. wrestling, bro. I don't want no. I'm gonna build a wrestling. I'm gonna have a wrestling mat in our house when I build it. Yeah. Hey, you do whatever makes you happy. I yeah. ain't doing it. So don't even yeah. ask me. Because <laughs> you win. You win. That's it. <laughs> All right. Now, that's how fun. did you know that comedy was your niche? Because you have this uncle Frank Lucas. You're, you know, you grew up tough. You went to private school. Family. Yeah. From um, what I'm gathering from you, really kept you in line yeah I had now, now that how do you line. how do you transition from you know private school selling fake gold chains um i was just out here thugging for no reason honestly bro i didn't have to but uh but uh growing well, you're, you're a businessman yeah but growing up bro um i always knew i wanted to be an entertainer i didn't know it was a comedian i wanted to be an actor like i was in i've been acting since i was young so my goal was to be like, oh, I'm going to move to L.A. I'm going to be like Will Smith. So um, when I was like. <sighs> I don't mean to interrupt you. Excuse me. So like when you were growing up, like you looked up to Will Smith. Mm-hmm. Like some people look up to Jordan yeah, or I Kobe to or whoever. So your, your idol was like Will Smith. Yeah. So you watch like every movie, every, every. And he's mainly like, Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah, yeah that was mainly what Fresh I watched. Fresh Prince like, go, and, what, What's, uh, what's, what's the Black. opening? What's the fucking. Uh, 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 in brother. West Philadelphia, yo, born, born and raised, raised on the playgrounds where I spend most, most of my days, days. chilling out, <laughs> maxing and relaxing on cool, and I'm shooting some b Come on, out. Rob, so kicking when a couple right. of guys who up to no good started, started making, making trouble, trouble in my, my neighborhood. neighborhood. I got in one little fight, and my mom got scared. She said, "You move with your auntie and Uncle Bel Air." I whistled for a cab, and when it came near, the lights and place say fresh and had a dice in the mirror. If anything, I can say this cab was rare, but I thought, man, forget it. Yo, homes of Bel Air. And then it goes, I whistle for a cab. Come on. I pull. Now he goes, I whistle for a cab. Oh, I already got that. I pull up to the house about uh, seven or eight, and I yell to the cab, yo, home, home smell you later. later. Look like to my kingdom. I was finally oh, home as I said. As the Prince of bel You got two white guys and a black guy. We're going to lose, Rob. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> we got no shot. Thank God she didn't sing. <laughs> That's what I looked up to, man. Yeah. I really looked up to Will Smith. like And Carl? Carl Winslow? Carl, it's funny. Oh, Carlton. Carlton. Carlton, do the dance. I know you could do it. It's not unusual to go out at any time. It's not unusual. <laughs> you want to die? My brother used to go out. <laughs> right? My brother used to go out. He's the funniest fucking guy. We have issues right now. Mm-hmm. But he used to go out, and we'd be at, like club-packed VIP. And he would do the Carlton. You know how much pussy he got from the Carlton? 
He would stand up. <laughs> he, he, he ripped as a motherfucker, yeah. right? They called him the Italian Stein. And he would do it. Like, we'd be in like Abercrombie. Remember Abercrombie was big? Yeah. And he and he didn't give a fuck. He'd walk in, take a t shirt off the rack, put it on himself, and they'd be like, What are you doing? <laughs> so and everybody laughed. It was fucking crazy. Man. So that was your idol. So that that's that what got cool. you to want to be like in, an, Hollywood. in, in Hollywood. Well, that's what. <clears throat> that's that's the person who made me know my goal was Hollywood. Like I knew I needed to be in LA. I knew I needed to be in LA. And uh when I was like 17 when I was in high school, I got on this show called MTV Your Mama. Now how did you get on there though? So back in the day, bro, there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook. We had MySpace mm -hmm. and I think we had this website called Tagged and um on MySpace, I think I was following MTV, and they made a post like, oh, MTV, your mama's casting. Go to MTV.com. So with MTV.com, you have to go to, like, casting calls. And I saw that the casting calls were in Atlanta. So I'm like, Mom, after school, you got to drive me to this audition. Like, you know what I'm saying? We got to go to Atlanta. It's at 6 o'clock. I get out of school at 2.30. Come pick me up. We're going straight to Atlanta. I got to do this. So we went. My mom went with me. On the episode, she, you can actually see my mom right behind me. So um, I went to do MTV on Mama. They loved me, whatever, whatever. I didn't win, but, like, TV was so fake. That's when I learned, like, TV was fake because, like, they, like, edited a lot of my stuff out and made me look like a true loser. When I can call any of my friends. Can, can I call my friend? Do whatever you want. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, man. Let's see. He better ask. What was the name of the show? MTV or Mama. Mama. Pull that up on, the one, on Google while he's looking. The one kid I went to college with, it was, one, it was on one of the shows. It was called Bones Brigante was his name. You know that, TV. You know that Dave? Mm -mm. Hey, hey, Greenwood. What up? I'm doing an interview right now. When I did MTV Yo Mama, tell these people, just tell these people, did I lose? No. Bro, didn't they cheat me because I was from the Mac? Yeah, they cheated you. Bro. Yeah. What's the Mac mean? Making, making in Atlanta oh, have a beef. Oh, okay, bro, he was there with me. Tymon, my mama, they cheated me. He was right there with me. This is this is my best friend, Johnny Greenwood. Say what up, Johnny? Johnny, uh, bro. Johnny, is he lying? Yeah, no, nah, he's not lying. Oh, you said yeah. I'm just fucking with him. They, I'm just joking with you, man. They cheated me, bro. Yeah, they, I live it. They cut it, bro. I appreciate. You'll never forget that day, right, bro? They cheated me. All right, big bro. Appreciate you, dog. Yeah. Bro, they cheated me, bro, because I wasn't from Atlanta. So even in my intro video, I did a, uh, I did an intro video because, like, when they show you at first and they say your name, i like, what up, it's your boy David from the Mac. You know what I'm saying? I'm about, to, I'm about to, I think I said something crazy, like, I'm about to kill all these Atlanta boys and cracking or whatnot. Oh, shit. They didn't do that, and they made me do another one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's on Amazon. MTV, Yo Mama, Southside versus Dunwoody, I believe, is the episode. Want to see if you can find it? Yeah. It's, it's, on it's like a dollar ninety nine. It. It's like a dollar ninety nine on, on Amazon. So um, I did it. Then they made me look like I lost. And like, but when the cameras weren't rolling, bro, I fired everybody up, even people in the audience, dog. Like I, everybody. Like I was roasting people for like thirty minutes, right? They didn't, even though I was a loser and whatever, in their eyes, um, there was a writer on the show. I do not remember his name, bro. I wish I remember his name. He was like, do you do stand-up? I said, no. He was like, have you ever tried it? I was like, no. He was like, bro, you should do stand-up. I was like, what you mean? Like stand-up comedy, like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor? He was like, yeah, stand-up comedy. He was like, bro, your timing, you're a stand-up comedian. He was like, your jokes are like my jokes, and I do stand-up. And I was like, bro, I don't know how to... I don't know how to do no stand I was like, dog, I don't know how to do no stand-up comedy. Like, what do I do? He was like, here's my number. Take it down. I'll tell you what to do. You go to some open mics. Right? He was like, just write your thoughts, and that's how you do stand-up comedy with your own flavor on it. You got to find his name, man. Bro, he lived in New York. He So I can describe him, bro. He was a chubby, short, black guy. He looked like Sway. You know Sway in the morning? Yeah, right here. Right. Yeah, that's, this, that's, this is it? Uh, South Side. No, no, no. Go to Atlanta episode. It's like uh South. It's like Southside versus Dunwoody, I believe. Is it uh, season one or no? I think it might be season two, cause that's L.A. That's L.A. 
Mob will find it. He's good. So what is it again? Southside versus Done With It. MTV or Mama. No, M O M M A. Southside versus like Dunwoody, I believe was the episode. W O O D Y, yeah. Season three, then yeah. Dunwoody, that's it. That's my episode right there. Right there, you're yeah. in that one. Yep. Is there like a trailer, Rob, or nah? God. We'll play it just just for fun. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my couch in there. Me and Dave will talk a while. So, yeah, bro, I, I was like, bro, I don't know how to do no fucking stand-up. He was like, take my number. I'll teach you how to do stand-up. My first joke on stage was um, I f- last night I fell asleep in between two slices of bread. That was my first joke. It made zero sense. Yeah, what do you mean you fell asleep between two slices exactly. of bread? Exactly, because I was saying I looked like ham or turkey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, bro, it was horrible. I was yeah. horrible. It's pretty bad, Dave. It's pretty bad, but now I'm... Well, that. you're you're there now, but yeah, that was that was a pretty bad. Joke. I didn't know what I was doing when I first started, bro. I was horrible, dog. Like it was. I can't watch it. You gotta buy it, I guess. I guess. Oh yeah, you have to buy it, dog. Yeah, my. I, I don't mind buying it, but I'd rather talk to you. So yeah. there it is. If it, you want to watch not, it, it's, you want. Yeah, it's, it's just that. just yeah. that we found. And, you yeah. know, we put it up. Done Woody versus Southside. That's what it is. Season three. So now, what's crazy is your your uh, your father was the state senator of Georgia, right? Something like that, yeah. He was he was up there, representative, whatever, representative, you know, whatever, yeah. same shit. So that's kind of impressive, right? So you got Frank Lucas as the uncle, <laughs> senator, and everybody all that. who trickled down from the Frank Lucas money is doing pretty well. I'll say that. They're, yeah, the drug money, you know, even though it was a bad thing and whatever, whatever, it, you know, because like just like the Italian family, bro, like. We're either one or two generations away from the hood. Either you were raised in the hood or your mom was raised in the hood. We don't have lineage of money like the other people in this world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Either our generation was in the ghetto or the generation behind. So what I'll say about Frank Lucas is that his generation, even though they did shit illegally, it enabled the rest of the family members to go into a different direction. Even though it was going left, the rest of us went right. You know, I, I agree with you, and I, I think people don't look at things that way. You know what I mean? So people that maybe have done 20 years in prison, maybe done the wrong thing. You set up a generation. You set up a generation. Exactly. And to me, you know. That's big. And I don't really give a fuck what people think of me. You know, to me, you did what you had to do to survive, but when you did it, you didn't just worry about yourself. You made sure that your family to come was taken care of while you were doing it. So it's one thing if you're just out on the corner and you're selling fucking drugs, Right. right. But when you do it to the extent that your uncle did, and not just blow it all on himself or give it to some girl or whatever the fuck it is, he did what he did, but he also set the path for you and people in your family. Right. So therefore, there's two ways to look at it. Okay, he was a drug dealer, right? But if he didn't do it, somebody else was going to do it. But at least he did it and thought of his family. And to me, to me, I have... You can call me fucked up wherever you want, but I, he he did his time like a man. He didn't rat. He held his ground. He did what he had to do, and he took care of his family. So therefore, to me, that's a win. It's a win. <laughs> that's a win. He put in the time. He took the risk. He knew what he was getting into. Absolutely. But he he took care of his family. Absolutely. And, and to me, I mean, it's a stand up guy to me. I mean, fuck it. It's what like again, you know. You I said, I said, you know, like if you. If you're going to do that, you're going to do it. And if, and if your uncle didn't do it, somebody else is going to do it. But at least he did it and thought of long term. And that I respect. And I got no problem. And he went and did his time like a man. He didn't talk. Right. He didn't tell nobody. Right. He handled it like a man. Yeah, he came out in a wheelchair. But you don't know that motherfucker before he was in that wheelchair. Exactly. And you don't want to know. You wouldn't want to know him, bro. For real, you wouldn't have wanted to know But I respect that he paved the way for you Absolutely. and your family. Absolutely. And that's something that, you know, not many people in that life do. Absolutely. And the ones that do, I respect, and I have n- nothing bad to say at all, yeah. whether it's drugs or whatever, yeah. unless you hurt a kid. Unless yeah. you hurt a kid. Yeah. That, kids are off limits. Yeah. But back then, they weren't putting fucking fentanyl and shit. No, and no, 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 no. I it mean, it was actually pure. fucking heroin. It was heroin. good yeah, dope. Yeah. It was good drugs. Yeah. Now it's all fucked up. Yeah, bro. I what do you think on the war on drugs? 
Um, and bad. I ask you this because of who your uncle is. It's bullshit. One. I think it should all be legal. It, yeah, but then you throw the government in it. I mean, it's like it's like Portland, bro. Decriminalize the shit. And I, Idaho too, right? I don't, maybe I don't know. About I think there's two states. Okay, but it, but at least you know then yeah. that it's it's like real shit, right? right? right. Like you're not right. you're like yeah, it might be a little bit more, right? But now if if heroin is legal today, right? Are you gonna go do heroin? Nope. Am I going to? <laughs> no. But the people that the same are, people that do it are gonna yeah. right. But at least the, it's heroin. It, mm-hmm. Like it's not like it went to you, to Rob, to this guy, to that guy, and by the time you get it, it's basically nothing. So now a guy that knows nothing about nothing is throwing in something to make it potent. Yeah. And then you're killing people. Over quarantine, bro, I lost a few associates to fentanyl. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, bro. Just, but that's the fucked up dope game right now. You You got your phone on airplane mode? You hear that buzz? Yeah, I did. Yeah, put that on airplane mode, please. Sorry. It it goes through the system and that's That's what we're hearing. Oh, that's what that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, through the, the messed up dope game, bro, I lost a few associates over quarantine from yeah. fentanyl yeah it sucks man yeah. once you're hooked on that shit it's, it's tough to get over but I, yeah. I i i've seen very very few people beat that one yeah you know? but right. again i i still believe that if they would make it legal they'd still be here because they would get the right shit right and they're gonna do it either way yeah you know what i mean you're not gonna stop somebody bro i was having a conversation when i was in austin the other day and we were talking about like drug addicts that are like living on the street. Like I know a lot of functioning drug addicts, bro. I'm talking about people that are lawyers, doctors, upstanding citizens that are, you know, weekend warriors. And then, you know, you see some drug addicts that are living on the streets. And I believe, I don't know if you believe the same thing, but I believe that the people that you see living on the streets doing drugs, were not going to be shit in life anyway. I'm with you. And to me, as long as a man, I believe I'm old school. Mm-hmm. I'm not this generation right. bullshit, right? right? I hate that they give everybody trophies right now. Yeah, that, that's that, ridiculous. Yeah. You, I don't care what anybody says when mm-hmm. I say how I feel. You cannot discipline. You got two kids, mm-hmm. right? More on the way, <laughs> right? Right. You putting them in the room is not going to do shit. No. You taking your belt off and not hurting them, but letting them know what's up. That's what makes them a man right. or a woman. We're the same, bro. If you put them in that room, so what? They're in the room for an hour? They'll you think they're going to learn they'll anything? They'll probably have fun. Yeah. The, no, way, they, the, yeah. way, the, the way parents set up kids' rooms now with all these toys and- Shit. My daughter would love to go to- <laughs> You yeah. sent it to my room? Oh, cool. <laughs> Look, listen, and you think your daughter don't have something hidden in there when you put her in there? <laughs> she probably got a fucking iPad that you forgot about or an iPhone or something Computer, to do. TV. Some shit that, and they're smarter than you. <laughs> yeah. You know? They are. We got hit too many times. We, all three of us in here got hit too many times. Damn so we're right. not all there. Damn right. You know, so you put a kid in the fucking room. Now, the kid that you made, the kid that Rob made, right? I can't go discipline her or she. That's that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I'm not hurting her. Right. I'm, I'm teaching her a lot. I could put my daughter in a room for fucking three hours. You think she gives a fuck? You know what my mom used to tell me, bro? She was like, when I got in trouble, she'd be like, I'm going to whoop you because if I don't, you're going to go to prison and they're going to beat you. Damn right. That's what she used to say. Good. <laughs> that's what she that's used to good, say. That's a good mom. Exactly. My mom beat the fuck out of me. It was a great, <laughs> it was a great, Rob's heard this a million times, so he's probably so sick of my shit, but I don't care right. because we just have fun here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've got more uh, gravy spoon. Uh, pasta, you know, sauce. sauce. Right, right, right. It's called gravy. The wood spoon, right? Yeah, the yeah, wood spoon. Yeah, yeah. I've had more of them broken over my ass than you could fucking count on your hands, toes, and the braids in your fucking hair. Man. Listen. And then when I broke the wooden one, Rob's probably sick of this one too, then it went to metal. <sighs> but you know what? The first time, ah, eh, fuck her. Second time, well, that one kind of stung. And then I thought twice about the third time. Right. This, this put in the case, you can't do this, you can't do that. These kids are going to be a fucking disaster. You know it. I know it. He knows it. It already it's already happening. Yeah. And now when you look on like TMZ, oh, he's homophobic. Now you can't even fucking talk. You can't even talk, bro. It's ridiculous, yeah. man. How's that? I mean, you're you're comedy, right? You involve like you do have, everything, right? Have you seen my? Oh, you probably don't have any uh, hard stand up clips on YouTube. But, but bro, you can't, you can't play YouTube because it goes yeah. right to them. Yeah. You can't. I'm play gonna. Um, sure. <clears throat> you're not gonna censor me. Nobody. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about on stage. 
and there's a lot of I don't want to be a famous comedian that has to walk on eggshells. I I grew up very conservative and I don't agree with a lot of the bullshit that's going on in society. I don't think a fucking man should be competing in fucking women's Olympics. Hell no. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair at all. I mean, that's just <clears> ridiculous. I never understood in what life is it okay. A man is just built differently than a woman. It's just uh, gender- that, That's just ridiculous. And you, yes. and you can be a power lifter now. Yeah. I, I, we go in power lifting for Women's Olympics. Bro, that, that, that's if, if that's the case, every man that doesn't make the NBA yeah. should be able to identify as a woman and go to the WNBA. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. If that's the case. It's ridiculous, but it doesn't go that way. Where does the line draw? Can I beat the shit out of a female, and when the police officers come, I say, oh, I identify as a woman. <laughs> this, was a, this was a lesbian domestic fight. Right. So, so here's an example, which neither, <laughs> neither of us would ever do, right? Mm-hmm. So a woman decides she wants to be a man, mm-hmm. or, a wo- or a man decides she wants to be a woman, mm-hmm. right? And what happens is, okay, well, now you're, you're technically a man, right, mm-hmm. in today's society. Right. So now I can punch you, right? Right. Because you're a man. Mm-hmm. You went and got your shit done. Now I rock you. What do you do? You call the cops. I'm a woman now. Now all of a sudden you're a fucking right. woman. Now we get clipped and we get pinched, right? Well, are you a man or a fucking woman? Right. And it's ridiculous. Don't do it at convenience. And it's ridiculous because powerlifting, you're going to take the. It's a man. <laughs> it's a man. Just because you chopped your cock off right. doesn't mean you're not a fucking man. Right. Your genetics are completely different. Right. It's fucking insane. Yeah. It's fucking insane that they give trophies to everybody. Yeah. It's fucking insane you say the word fucking gay and Christ, now you're against gay people. Yeah. I don't care what a fucking gay guy does. Me Just don't either. do this shit around me. That's all. Me either, bro. I Live don't. your life. Be happy. Be baby. gay, but, you know. Do your I thing. I don't got to agree with what you do. And do your thing <laughs> on your time, right? Yeah. But fuck, you say one fucking thing. I posted a, I made a post on Instagram maybe like three weeks to a month ago um, when that man won the Miss Uni- Miss America of Nevada. Oh, yeah. Did you see that, Rob? So oh, I, yeah. I took Tom, the Tom clip. Tom I took the oh, clip. Get sick. I took the headline where a transgender man won Miss Nevada and I put it on Instagram and I said, so can a cat win a dog show now? Where's the line? Where's, Where's the, the line, fucking Dave? Line, bro. Now how do you, now how do you change that? That's the question. How do you change that? You, it's too far gone, and it's just gonna get worse and worse. And bro, worse and worse. The, <clears throat> maybe not our kids, but our kids' kids, they probably won't be able to have a gender. You'll have a fucking little boy pulling his dick out next to a girl in the bathroom, and you know, like it, it won't mean anything. Did you notice, like, when you sign up for something, it says like male? female other and other. all that shit yeah really? yeah but like, so like right now if you make a gmail account right right dave it will, like you'll put rob whatever okay and then it will say you know blah 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 male female or other i mean come on bro i live in west hollywood which is like the gay capital of la and like i said i don't have a, a problem with gay people at all Me they're neither. all my neighbors they're nice you know what i'm saying very nice our neighborhood is very clean I feel very safe. When she comes over, I feel very safe. I'm like, oh, there ain't going to be no bullshit over here. But uh, if you go to the, like, it, it's like, um, was it a, a few weeks ago in L.A., uh, a guy that identified as a woman walked into Wee Spa, which is a high-end sort of spa in L.A. He walked into the woman's side with his dick out. If my fucking 13-year-old, 15-year-old daughter was in there, I'd be ready to beat his ass. Like, what are you doing, bro? But they think that's okay. Exactly. That's not cool. And and what they don't understand is is that that little kid. Scarred. That's scarred. That's in the brain forever. You know what I mean? And that will fuck them up later in life. A, and a you know young, what happens? Right. They become fucking whores. Right. That's what happens. A young girl should not see male genitalia. Absolutely not. No. Fuck no. No. Not into, uh, and my luck, I have a daughter. Right. <laughs> so you can see how this is going to go. <laughs> not good. But it, it's just crazy, and it's just going to get worse. And But good thing for Elon Musk, because he's got a lot of <laughs> shit coming. <laughs> if they let him, yeah. they'll, they'll probably block him. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? So anyway, so you get into the comedian thing. Mm-hmm. What was your first, like, big gig? Not like, you know, you're working your way up. you like, I know you opened for Rogan, and we'll get into that. I'm 
extremely what was my first that big one. gig. Yeah, what was the first one? What was the first time, right? You get on stage and you're like, yo, if I don't, if, if I do this right, I'm there. Uh, I got up on potluck at the comedy store in like 2009. It always reversed the comedy store. Yeah. Every real comedian that made it, they've all went through the comedy store. Back when um, Tommy, who a lot of people didn't like, was the talent coordinator. And he was like, bro, you're funny. He's like, you're funny, man. Keep coming. But like the inconsistent fuck I used to be, I didn't keep coming. I probably would have been at the comedy store a long time ago, but I, I just lacked consistency. Maybe you didn't believe in yourself enough. You know? Um, I had I had a um, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? I had a uh, complex that I had to kill. Well, you had anxiety, right? I have anxiety. Yeah, I did too. I but know. also had a complex because I knew. When you knew, say complex, what do you mean complex? I just knew I was funnier than everybody else. So it's like, why am I not entitlement? Like, why am oh, I not you had entitlement this? issues. Yeah, why am I not getting this? Yeah, I know I'm funny, motherfucker. You should be putting me on your fucking show. I see. Don't ask about nothing. Put me on your fucking show. So I had that complex and that alter ego that I had to kill in order to be successful. See, that's why you're a stand-up guy because you can admit that. See? Mm-hmm. You had, you had a complex, you yeah. know? And Not you, anymore. You, you, right, but you felt at the time <laughs> that you were better than everybody. I still and, do, but I don't let it. Well, be. that, that, that. <laughs> but, but no, but, but there's one thing between confidence. Confidence yeah. is one thing, mm-hmm. right? But so, I had a, eat a big, bad ego. Problem. Right. So now you have confidence, mm-hmm. right? You don't have the other thing. Before no. it was like, I deserve this. Right, I deserve, right. oh, you're not going to put me first? Right. Well, Dave, the people before you, maybe they've been doing what you've been doing for fucking 10 years. Bro, you don't deserve to be there yet. It's crazy. The, the more famous I get, the less I care about a lot. Like when I do shows and even if I don't feel like the comedian's better than me, and like, you put that motherfucker after me? Like you want him to follow me? And now I'm just like, I don't give a fuck, bro. I make it harder for him. Like imagine being the little dick guy after the big dick guy in a gangbang. I wouldn't want to be that little Exactly. Dick so that's how I feel now. I'm but the it, big dick guy in the gangbang. You want to go after me? Have fun. But at the same time, you were that little dick guy at one time. At one time. Yeah. So you got to remember that yeah. when you go yeah. in and do this shit that, yeah, you know, you don't like the way it's set up, but yeah. you were that little dick guy too. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So you got to respect that. Mm-hmm. And the guy still comes on stage yes. knowing that you're going to bury him. You got to respect that, yeah. right? You know, so... Wow, yeah. well, you can do one hell of a neck crack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I heard that through the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> I know you got hit a few times after oh, you got that. Yeah, long. Yeah, a bro. few, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so you get into that. Mm-hmm. So you follow Will Smith. You get on stage. You gotta, Almost look, quit comedy, bro. Almost quit entertainment. I uh, Because of entitlement issues? No, so um, my daughter was, my oldest daughter was like one or two. And um, I, when she was born, I stopped doing comedy for like 13 months to be a dad. And I was kind of like working and doing comedy maybe three times a month, not really doing comedy. And uh, I was like, man, I kind of like being this dad. But at the same token, I was like missing the stage. Like my life didn't feel complete, even though I had a baby girl. I didn't really... I was like, man, like, all right, maybe I should move back home. And I was like, damn, like, all right, maybe I'm not supposed to be a comedian. You know, I can say I get questioning yourself. Yeah, I could yeah. say like, all right, man, you know, how many people in Macon can say they went to L.A., lived there for five years and, you know, sustained the life? So I was like, I did good. Like, I was accepting fate. Like, I was like, yeah, man, you know, I can go back home. Get a job and I can stay at my mom for a little while, stack up some money, you know, get a fucking factory job or Geico or some bullshit and, <laughs> and you know, live, go get me a fucking 3 2 house that costs $1,100 a month and raise a family. And when I'm 45, I'll be able to buy my dream car of a Dodge Challenger V8. <laughs> white with a white picket fence? Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was. That'd be funny know, to see you with the white picket fence. That would make me laugh. I had all that bullshit in my head. So um, my uh, youngest daughter's mom, uh, who I was dating at the time, um, I was talking to her. I was like, yeah, I think I want to move back home. And she's like, I don't know. 
<laughs> she's like, I don't know. She's like, you're not happy. She's like, you're not happy at all. And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, you mope around. You're always depressed because you're not getting on stage. But, you know, you're taking care of your daughter. So I was like, hmm, you're right. So I was like, let me contemplate on this. So I think it was 20. Let me see. My daughter was born in 2014. So 2015. Or maybe it was 2016. So, yeah, I took a year off. So it was 2016. Was she five, six? She's six. Six. Yeah. So I took a, like, maybe like 18, 17 months. She was maybe two when I started back doing comedy. So in the top of the year, I think it was 2016. Or was it 2017? I can't fucking remember. Fucking One of them years. One of them years. Yeah. On New Year's, I said, um, I'm going to commit. I said, uh, you know, I meditated. I prayed. I was like, all right, universe, all right, God, like, I need a sign. Like, I'm going to do this for a year. I'm going to put my all into it and give me a sign if this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I just need to know that I'm supposed to be an entertainer. Like, because I'm, 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 I'm at my wits end. I'm ready to move back home. Fuck living in L.A. if I'm just working a regular job. There's no reason for me to be here. The rent is fucking sky high. I'd rather be in Georgia where I can get a house. So uh, uh, that year started, and two weeks I got a manager, and then by the end of January I booked a movie that's on Amazon. So I was like, "Oh shit, this <laughs> okay a movie? Yeah, it's a bullshit movie, but it don't matter. It's still a movie. <laughs> it's called Snakes Out of Compton. That's nah, not bullshit, man. Yeah, <laughs> to me. Nah, well, see if you can put that uh, Snake Out of Compton. Yeah, bro, it's a horrible. It don't matter. You still got into a movie. Yeah, and so what I'm gathering from you. Comedy is your therapy, and without it, you're just a mess. I'm a lost soul, bro. Yeah, depressed. There it is. So 2017. So it's 2017. 2017. All right, yeah. we got to your. Right. I played Biggie Smalls in it. Yeah, you so. played Biggie Smalls. Yeah, in the dream <laughs> sequence. Yeah. You should come back down when uh, Greg's in there. I got a big, thank you, Tyler. By the I got a Biggie Smalls impression that I did, so yeah. I won them over. Yeah. Yeah. Thank P Diddy for that. Yeah. So um, I played, I booked that movie. I think it paid like $1,500. And I was like, all right, yes, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And then uh, later on that year, I, I, uh, my friend hit me out of the blue. He was like, hey, man, come on, do this show. I was like, what show? He's like, ADD roast me. I was like, what is it? He's like, we just be roasting. I was like, all right, man, I, I roast. So I can do that. So I got on that show. I was on one episode, killed it. And then, like, two weeks later, they called me back to be a regular. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, God damn. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Like, yeah. this this is the sign I needed. Like, I'm like, all right, I'm full I'm full time. Now, when you went back to comedy, right, because mm -hmm. you, you had anxiety issues, mm -hmm. did that calm your anxiety? Uh, in a way, but no. So it was more just therapy. Bro. When, I, I had anxiety. Bro. When I'm on stage, when I'm on stage, nothing can affect me. Yeah. But when I before I'm on stage and after I'm on stage, nervous, <laughs> yeah. right? Even today, I'm a fucking. I mean, I had some drinks, so I'm cool. But uh, I'm a wreck. Do you always have a couple of drinks before you go on stage? I don't drink before I go on stage. No. Mm -mm. Oh, after if I have a drink, it'll be like one. If I'm having a bad day, I'll have like one. But just the comedy. I treat it like a job, you yeah. know. Like this is I only got to be on stage twenty, thirty minutes or an hour. I cannot have a drink within that time frame so that I can. Be competent enough and give you the best performance that you need. So right. I, I don't never want to perform drunk because yeah. I treat it like a job. Do you go to your job and do it drunk? Like, like, would a doctor go be a doctor drunk? Yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope I never run into that fucking guy, you know. So you get your gig, you got the fucking movie. It's still a movie, dude. It don't matter if it's a piece of shit or not. It's still, I mean, not, sure. not many people get to be in a not movie. Not many you people know? got to yeah. be right? people can say they're in a movie. So, like, you talk like it's nothing, but it, it's really not nothing. But yeah. th this is all ways that pave you to where you're at. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> how do you run into um, Red Band? Uh, so, in 2019. I was already uh, a door guy at the comedy store. My friend, Brian Tucker, comes in from Atlanta. He's like, man, I want to go sign up for Kill Tony. I'm like, man, fuck Kill Tony. Now, why would you say fuck Kill Tony? Because I was like, man, I sign up for that shit all the time. I never fucking get on. Oh, it's a waste of time. Like, bro, I don't. Why? Why? I said, 
I don't want to do that shit. You're like, I'm not doing it again. Yeah, I was, I'm, I, I'm already a regular at the comedy store. I'm, I, I got a job at the comedy store. I'm like, I don't need right. Kill Tony. You know what I'm saying? I don't need this, bro. Like, I, I got a job at the comedy store. Why do I need Kill Tony? Dave, entitlement issues. Entitlement issues, bro. Mm. So I'm like, nah, I'm not doing it. He's like, come on, bro. Just go with me, man. What year is this? 2019. Like, mm-hmm. maybe August, September. You got to get over that entitlement shit. It's better now. It's way better. So I'm like, um, all right, man, I'm going to go because of you. We go sign up. I get on. So hold up. We're sitting through Kill Tony. It's probably like 30, 45 minutes before it ends. He's like, man, you want to go to the improv? I said, yeah, fuck it. Let's go to the improv. He's like, let's watch one or two more. The next name is mine. I'm like, ain't that a bitch? Like, I couldn't even believe it was me. I'm like, oh. Uh, I didn't even know what I was going to say. Oh, so you weren't even prepared. I wasn't prepared because I was. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to get up. Mm-hmm. So while I'm walking to the stage, I'm like, fuck, what joke can I do in six seconds? Six, 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 six. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. And I also knew that Tony roast people, so I'm like, what I'm going to do in a fight, I'm going to hit first. I don't like to talk. I'm going to hit first and then see what happens. So I did my six seconds, killed it. Tony said whatever, and I hit it with a joke. Bam! <coughs> Bam. A good one? A good joke. I don't remember what it was, yeah. but I'm always roasting the shit out of Tony. Um, and that's when it was live. Uh, it's pre-recorded now because of whatever. So um, I hit him with a joke. Bam. And uh, did my thing. Everybody said, oh, shit, bro. You killed it, bro. You murdered it. And that night, Tony's mom messaged me. She was like, that was my favorite set ever on Kill Tony. I was like, shit, for real? She was like, yeah. Me and her still talk to this day. And I was like, thank you so much, Miss Hunts Club. And maybe it was Wednesday or Thursday. I was hanging out at the comedy store. And Tony was like, hey, that was good stuff, man. Come back Monday. He talks weird. Yeah, he talks very proper. All, all due respect. Hey, he talks I, I'm a peanut. He, he's on that level. But he does he, talk he, he a talks, fucking weird. He talks proper and is... He enunciates everything. Like, he almost speaks perfect English. That's what I call it. He it's wouldn't like, be able to understand a word I fucking say. <laughs> <laughs> he almost speaks perfect English. So he's like, yeah, come back on Monday. And I was like, man, I'm out of town. This, I'm fucking, I was on the road with somebody. I can't remember who the fuck I was. Maybe Eric Griffin. You know what I mean? oh, she no, it wasn't Eric Griffin because I didn't meet Eric Griffin yet. Oh, it's know. later in life. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck <laughs> I was on the road with. But I was on the road with somebody. So I'm like, hey, man, I can't, bro. I'm on the road. Uh, you know, get back to Monday night, bro. And he's like, well, the next time. I was like, all right, yeah, I'll come back the next time. And so I come back the following Monday, and I'm like, shit, I got picked again? So we go out there and roast. We roast, kill it again. His mom messaged me, oh, my God, you're so fucking hilarious. After the show, he finds me. He said, hey, motherfucker, you better keep coming. I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> hey, Rob, that's how he talks to you. He's yeah. like, hey, motherfucker, you yeah. better keep coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like 24 7, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I just watched it because, of, you know, he was coming on. Mm. And, uh, hey, Rob, how you doing? And no disrespect. Again, I'm a peanut. You're on top. You know, I give respect to respect to it. But, yeah. hey, Rob, right? Right there? Yeah, yeah for <laughs> real. Like, what the fuck? So I'm like, he could right. be like Screech from Saved by the Bell, with all due respect. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, bro, I keep coming. Um, so I came maybe two more times and then like maybe the fourth or fifth time I was on the show, um, I was roasting Michael Bisping, the UFC fighter. He's like, all right, stop the show. Stop the show. Ladies and gentlemen, David Lucas is the new regular. I was like, what the fuck? New regular. (laughs) He was like, yeah. I was like, oh shit. So he made me a regular on the show. And I, bro, I've got viral clips of me <laughs> roasting, fucking. Uh, you got that? listen. That we're we're all sports. Me and Robert sports guys. Who uh, I can never. He's an actor too. You cook. The white guy. Yeah, you cook. From New York, the loud mother. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. He's on ESPN all the time. He he comes in. The white. What's guy. his name? From New York. Uh, Mike something. I think. Rappaport. Rappaport. Oh, Dude, well, he, Michael Rappaport. Yo, yeah. when we pull up his Instagram. It's only like 30 seconds. A rap report. Buries him. You do. Yeah. I mean, go to my I mean, IG, bro. And he's funny. He's a funny yeah, dude. Yeah, rap he's loud. Like, he's loud. Yeah, loud and curses he's every loud. word out of his mouth. He's, curse. When I was, he's like, look at this motherfucker. Dry dread motherfucker. Look at your nails. 
he called me something. He 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 used like a he is pretty funny. Like an almost racist term. He was like, I forgot what he said. He said, Oh, he cooked him. Rob, he cooked him. Yeah. You know, I, but we see him I on ESPN all the time. Ass. You know, I man? got his ass. Oh, he got him. When we pull up his oh, he got him. <laughs> and it's only 30 seconds. I mean, you can't come back. I forget, I forget exactly what you said before you came back. I said a lot back. of shit, bro. I but said a lot of shit. That I you can't come back from that. Pasty Rob. ass white guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he oh, he cooked him. I said a lot of shit to that motherfucker. Uh, so. Another one you did with Oh yeah, that was before Kill Tony. I roasted Corey Feldman. Yeah, I told that motherfucker he looked like the ghost of Michael Jackson. (laughs) (laughs) Like like roasting's like uh, the rap battles from years ago, right? Where you'd go and you'd. I I don't write though. A lot of those motherfuckers write. They write it, but you just come right off the. Yeah, I don't. I don't like writing. I like it more organic. I like to tell people like how you look right now, as opposed to some shit where they got to know the history of you and. It it is like a rap battle, right? But, but I mean, if need be, I can write for a roast show. But you're just um, that quick, like you yeah, can just yeah, boom, like yeah. on a snap, yeah, find something to find. Rob, he somebody. he's like like Tupac, right? He was just off the rip, you know what I mean? Now he had lyrics and shit, but they he just had it, you yeah. know. Now Wayne, he's good, little Wayne. Now he comes off the rip, but it's like blah blah blah, you know. Yeah. The lyrics kind of suck. <laughs> and after jail, you know, he, Weezy F baby. Yeah, I mean he's still the man, but yeah, we, not like you know, but Pac and right. a couple others. But Wayne doesn't write anything down, supposedly. Right. What do you think about that, Dave? You think he actually does that off the rip? I mean, I love the Wayne, and I. I got a little look. He's right there. Look, I got a, the fucking dog. little Weezy baby, and yeah, no, yeah, is my favorite person ever. Yeah, look, I got him. That's a plastic cell. Good luck getting that one. I became a regular, and then being a regular on the show just introduced me to a lot of people. And then uh, after quarantine, we were doing the quarantine uh, episodes with no audience, which was horrible. And uh, then we got our first real audience when Rogan moved to Austin. And Tony was like, hey, we're doing our first episode in Austin. You better fucking be there. And Rogan was the guest. He saw me. He was like, you're funny. He followed me that night. I was like, oh, shit. Joe Rogan just followed me. Price just went up, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, pull up his Instagram while Rogan's talking about him. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And then you got to tell me, being that I copied off of him. And, hey, all due respect, I, I followed the best, just like you were, like, uh, with Will Smith. There it is. Yeah, let me turn it up. David fun Lucas dude. is a killer. Yeah. He's a killer and he's a good dude. Yeah. He's a fun dude to be around. Yeah. He's a good dude too because like Tony and him crack on each other and when Tony gets him, he laughs loud. Right, right. Loud and hard. Yeah. Which is a sign of a good guy. Yeah. A guy who takes a hit yeah. like and laughs. Yeah. Like, like Tony will say something to him and he's like, ah! <laughs> yeah. It's it's just it's comics. David Lucas. Right. David Lucas is funny. Funny. Yeah. David yeah. Lucas is a killer. Yeah. He's a killer. He's a killer. So now how is Rogan in person? The most informative motherfucker you will ever meet in your life. Really smart. That motherfucker knows about everything. Or is everybody on there? I mean, if you say something about rock, yeah, man, I was drinking a rock star. Actually, rock star was started in 1980 by us. It was actually started by John Wicker. Uh, him and a friend actually, you know, made elixir in their garage. So I'm like, how the fuck do you know all of this? Yeah, it's just like that. But I mean, you know, when you're a master at podcasts, you've interviewed so many people. And he just retains knowledge, bro. He he knows so much, dog. He knows so much. And that's how I want to be with that when I'm daddy. He can talk about anything. Me too. Like Dave Chappelle. I love Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle has a lane when he can talk about right. comedy. He can talk about. I've never really heard him. Rogan, this motherfucker can talk about any and everything. Yeah, so, like like Dave's lane is comedy. He'll mm-hmm. make you laugh. If you don't laugh with it with Dave Chappelle, Rogan's wrong, more yeah. than a comedian, bro. Yeah, Rogan's got like three thousand. Bro, laughs. he's. I look up to him. I, yeah, I copied off of bro, him. I, I evolved. Fucking, that I've I've, I, Rogan could be a professor, dog. Like he no, he has so much knowledge, dog, and he just knows so much. It's almost insane. Do you and, think that that Spotify move Spotify move was a good move? Hundred million? How can you? But I mean, I mean, do you think they're censoring shit at all? Eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars an episode. Is that what he's getting? Yeah. On Spotify? Yeah. How many years did he sign for? Because uh, they 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 never made that clear. I don't know. I think it's three years. Three years. He gets how much an episode? Eight hundred and eighty thousand. God damn. <laughs> Wow. Well, I mean, we get like I don't give a fucking I don't give a fucking I don't give a fucking if I sign to the Jehovah Witnesses. 
If I'm getting eight hundred and eighty, you know what? I'll knock a motherfucker to work. You give me, you give me eight hundred thousand a week. I'll knock him. I'll put the fucking hat on and everything. What do I gotta do? Get a little white. I'll paint my motherfucking self right. And then you know, being around Rogan, when I hear him, you know, talking about guests, like he talk when he trusts you, bro. He he he's transparent. You know what I'm saying? So like, I hear him talking about guests he's about to get, and he's like, ah. Uh, I guess I'll fly that motherfucker private. I'll fly him fri- private. You know, like, it's like, God damn, like, you, just, you flying people private to be on a podcast it's killing, in man. Austin, Texas. But it's like, you know, $880,000 an episode. What's a $10,000 Yeah, what, what's, a, what's a 5K flight, right? Yeah. May, maybe 10 if it's far. Round trip, probably 10 Yeah, yeah. What's and he can write that off on yeah, taxes anyway. But, part um, of it. And then, you know, if you didn't know Joe Rogan, you wouldn't know he's worth Two hundred million is it? He owns own it. You know what I'm saying. He got so many other business ventures. He has a nice house. He's about to build his comedy club. His comedy club will be here by the end of the year. Are you in gonna? Austin. Are you gonna? Of course, Rogan, yeah. bro. Me and Rogan are locked in, dog. My man. Like Rogan is the person who gave us tickets to the fight this Saturday in Houston to see DLC. Derek Luce. Uh, yeah. How, how was that in person? No, it's coming this Saturday. Oh, yeah. August 7th. I can only watch so much UFC because it's so Well, brutal. we're not getting there early. We're going to probably get there an hour after. So I don't want to see them bullshit fights. Nah, it's, it's <laughs> too much. Derek Lewis, I like him. Yeah, you I like him? He no, talks no, shit. No, he he talks shit. knocks people out. You, you know, you would think that I wouldn't care, but I mean, man, I, that's fucking... I just I can only watch a little bit. Derek yeah. Lewis is a slugger. Yeah, he, uh, he crushes people. That UFC shit, I can watch like one fight and then I'm done. It's just... I want to see. It's just not. Really I want to see four fights before Derek Lewis. So I'm gonna come like an hour before. I don't want to see all them. All the others. All yeah, the other, fucking. Yeah. It's too much. Non-sponsored motherfuckers. And and it gets too like it's like too brutal after a while. You know what I mean? I, I mean, for me, for I'm me. barbaric. Yeah, you're barbaric. See, yeah, for me, yeah. I don't know. It's I just, like this. I, I like the, I loved a lot. It was two fights ago. Two UFCs ago. The guy that got called in like two days' notice. He was like bagging groceries or something. Dude, he went against Sugar Sean O'Malley. He took a fucking ass whooping. Like, he sat there and just kept get, getting get hit in the fucking face. And the announcers at first were like, oh, this is going to end quick. And even Sugar Sugar Sean, uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley, yeah. he's like, it's over. And the dude's face, it, he stayed the whole fight just getting fucking you know what talking about? Yeah. And I was like, damn. But that now, now they're talking about him. He lost. But he made a good he's, purse. He, he got some money out of it. And I mean, bro, I'm on the road with Brendan Schaub, and you know I've opened for Rogan a few times, so it's like I hear a lot of UFC talk. So I'm I understand way more of the UFC now than I did before. So yeah, I, I can't wait for Saturday. It's, this is her first UFC fight. She don't care about it, but she's like, I got a nice dress. <laughs> <laughs> so. so now. So you start working with Red Band, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. He produced uh, me and William Montgomery's uh, podcast, Brothers in Cursive. Red Band is the pod father. You know, he started the Joe Rogan podcast. Now, two questions. One, why did that end? And two, why do you think he doesn't get the credit that he probably should for helping out? I mean, I know Rogan I think he got, does get the credit. Does he? Yeah. You just don't hear about it as much. Yeah. Like, people that know, know. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I guess that's really all that matters, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I don't know why he uh you, why did my podcast in? Yeah, like why did you stop that? Um, so me and William, when uh Tony and everybody moved to Austin, me and William's plan was to stay put in LA and fly to Austin, you know, twice a month. And um we invested maybe like ten K into a studio and we built it in this guy's garage, which was a horrible move he suggested we did. And he had um, what is it called? Alter, what is it called? Alter, what is it? Alter, uh, ulterior, 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 whatever that shit. Yeah. That word, yeah. ulterior motives. And down he, that road, yeah. Before. So he had other motives, which he was trying to make himself uh, a third host. And it's like we don't need a fucking third host. We need a fucking producer. So in other words, he was using you right. to make himself look. And better. we had invested all this fucking money in this fucking. shit, and then he started like going crazy 
And I was just kind of over it because, you know, we had a few other issues at the time which have been resolved. Me and William almost lost our friendship. Me and her were actually eating one day. I was doing a show in Bakersfield, and I was dealing with all this shit. And I'm like, babe, I'm so fucking sick of this shit. Like, I just want to be done with this whole fucking podcast. Like, I don't want anything to do with it. But, I mean, um, it's highly likely that our podcast will come back. Now, did Red Band leave? Did he leave, like, your podcast, or you just... He didn't leave the podcast. He moved to Austin. Mm -hmm. And me and Will at the time were like, I'm not moving to fucking Austin. He moved to Austin, like, in November. I'm like, bro, I got two kids in L.A. I'm not moving to fucking Austin. You want to stay in L.A.? Yeah. You're fucking crazy, man. I love L.A. I love it, too. I had season tickets to Lakers for two years. Floor seats. Mm -hmm. I love L.A. I loved it until that fuck came in and fucked everything up. Oh, uh, what's the name? What's the name? Garcetti, Mayor Garcetti. We had the one of the most nicest guys I've ever met. Uh, Tony, what was his last name, Rob? Ver Verdeo? Ver Tony Verdugo. Verdugo, right? I told everybody. He opened <clears throat> up Dre's. He was the guy who opened nightclub. up Dre's in Vegas. Vegas. That was all him. I had him in. The nicest guy I've ever met in my life. I mm. swear to God, that guy's got the heart of fucking gold. If mm. I could have a heart like him, shit. And he opened that up and... Uh, he was just saying, you know, you know, what stuck with me with him was, you know, because he, you know, he does like strip clubs and shit, right? So you think it was all about the money and the pussy and everything else, and he's like, no, no, no. He goes, I do this just to make people happy, to make them smile. Mm. Good dude. I've been to Dre's. Yeah, bro. L. A. was so much better. Like a city like L. A. That is a corrupt city, bro. You can't have some. Democratic soft dick motherfucker. You gotta like our city was so better when we had Mayor Villaraigosa. Yeah, people called him a criminal. That motherfucker had. They. I, I remember when that motherfucker had uh, floor seats. Him and his date to the uh, Lakers finals, and they were talking about the mayor's salary versus what the tickets cost. And he got on TV the next game. He got on TV the next day. He was like, "It was a gift." <laughs> I'm like. This is my yeah, you. I, you can't be a, a righteous motherfucker and run a city like LA. It's too big. It's too corrupted. You gotta kind of have a little gangster in you to run a city like LA the right way. Like we didn't have that homeless problem when he was there, but you get this new Garcetti motherfucker, and you know, like our, they just now started cleaning up. But it's like, yeah, after what? Now that you got the job <clears throat> working with Biden's ass. You're going to start cleaning up the city? Right. And the reason why I brought up Tony was because he put out, what, two, two million ballots he put out to, like, uh, kind of like a GoFundMe to get rid of that fucking guy. Yeah. I mean, what, <laughs> two million? I mean, Tony's big time. Damn. I, like a shit ton. Like, he had what? Was it two million or 20 million, Rob? I think two million, but he, I think it was two. Ooh. Two million. Like, yeah. he had two million ballots to get that fucker out of there that he sent in because he lives in L.A. and he loves L.A. like you. Yeah. But not with that guy. So he went around among the gazillion things he's doing. He's down here in Florida redoing, um, was it Spearmint Rhino? Oh. He's redoing it, and the whole place looks different. But I mean, uh, possible places that we will live will be uh, Austin or, or South Florida. South Florida, because if we have a kid down there, she can't get me for that much child support. Oh, shit. <laughs> and the you, taxes are yeah, you better taxes. hold your fucking balls after that con <laughs> <laughs> chop your fucking dick off nah, she now, now I'll stand next to you next to the urinal you, after she takes you know how you told me the story <laughs> about a good woman earlier yeah that's how I feel about her yeah babe if you need $50,000 a month to live I got you you wouldn't have brought her if it wasn't exactly I know yeah no, whatever like what, whatever you need to live until it sounds ridiculous she's your crutch yeah you lose her you're fucked yeah just to let you know yeah exactly whatever you need to live until it sounds ridiculous I got you <laughs> you're over the entitlement bullshit yeah I'm cause that's gonna that's yeah. gonna fuck your career bro I feel like this any woman that has my kid like what, what do you what do you need yeah. What do you need? Well, that that's because you were raised like Rob and I and Tyler, and, right. and we're old school. Right. Man provides. Right. And that's it. I don't want her to work. No. I feel like our family is a full time job. I feel like if unless again unless like a die or has like a special you know like Rob's wife you know she's a unbelievable. Mm. Uh, well, like, she models, so if she gets yeah, a gig, so she might yeah, yeah. I mean, right? You know, <laughs> if they got that thing, but I'm talking like. Working your ass off, you you don't. As a man, I could never accept. I'd shoot again. I mean, I would. I could never live. I could never live like that. I told her when we live together, I'm pay the rent. You take care of 
the et cetera. I told you. <laughs> I, I told you you're Italian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you so me. now you're Cuban, black, and Italian. Hey, yo, when we <laughs> when we live together, capiche, take, I take care of the rent, you take care of the et cetera. Forget about it. Forget yeah. about <laughs> it. You think you're going to work? Forget about it. Give me a good joke. <laughs> give me a good joke, Dave. Make I, us laugh. I give you an easy joke. No, man. not easy. Give me a good one. It's hard, man. Performing. Make fun of me. I don't care. No, it's, that's, it's harder than that. Come on. It's, you could do it off the rip. All right, I give you a joke. You want 50K a week? You better be able to come off the rip, my I man. I give you a, a quick You joke. cook me. Actually, yes. fuck that. Don't you, you'll yeah. destroy me. Cook Rob. No. <laughs> Let me give you a quick little joke that I like to tell. Cook Tyler. Oh, Jesus. That's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, uh, what did one casket say to the other casket? I'm dead? No. Is that you coughing? <laughs> See that? <laughs> I'll give you a five on that one because I know oh, you got God. better. I saw, I, I saw better. I saw better. <laughs> Y'all got to see me perform, man. You got to see this. Well, thing. you told me you're, you're going to have me back there, right? Yeah, of course. I got your back, man. You know I got your back. You solid, dog. I appreciate it. You, you know, the one thing in life, man's words, all that matters. Yeah. You give the word, you better stick to it. And that what, uh, ain't that what Scarface said? Yeah, Scarface. Probably. All a man's got is his word and his balls. Machiavelli the Prince. And he never breaks. You ever read heart. that? Machiavelli the Prince. A little bit. That's where Tupac got his. That's why you like Tupac. Because you know about Machiavelli. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. now it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I've read it about a gazillion times. Now that makes a lot of sense. Now, if you read Machiavelli the Prince in mm -hmm. like modern terms, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, and you apply that to your life, it will change. Well, it's, you know, it's business. You want me to order another book on Amazon? Just get the audio because I know I can already tell you're not going to read that shit. You ain't going to read I it. I like reading. Don't play. I you like, like reading. I read every morning. Let me ask your girl. Does he read every morning? What's that? I read on my phone. I read the news every morning on my phone. On his phone. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that. Oh. When I'm scrolling, you probably think I'm just scrolling, but I I read the New York no. Post. I I read the New York Post every morning. Dave, I'm talking about real shit. Okay, do you, I have books on my phone, audio, but audio like this. Audio. Yeah. I cannot see you sitting there with a hardback cover reading in front of no one. Have you seen him do that? How long have you been with him? And have you ever seen him read a book? You're a liar. I've never seen you read a book. <laughs> <laughs> when you're asleep. Oh, all right, all right. You you know what? He must he must do it when you fall. I got like twenty books in my room though. Well, they look good. At mm -hmm. least they look good, right? Makes you look. But good. I you read all of them. I read all of them. Did you? Which ones did you read? Uh, Atlas Shrug. What was that about? Uh, Atlas Shrug is about individualism. And Ryan. Did you listen to Ryan. it or read it? I read it. I have Atlas Shrug and I have Fountainhead. She's a great. Do you think you actually read it? Or do you think you listened to it? If you had to take a while, I guess. Yes. So. All right. All right. You win. Yeah. I lost. Yeah. I still don't think you read it, but okay. I read it, bro. I've read I've read, just, I've read, just, I've read uh I read Fountainhead actually twice. It's a big book. That. Yeah, read Machiavelli the Prince. All right. I'll, or I'll give it I'll give it to I'll give one to you. Send me as a gift on Amazon. I will. And so I can download it and I'll read it. I actually listen to it on our flight Saturday. See, listen. <laughs> anyway, so do you now do you think you'll so you're saying either Florida, Texas, or you're going to stay in L.A.? I'm always going to have a place in L.A., and I'm yeah. always going to have a place in Georgia. I, I miss L.A. But right? as far as, like, where my family at is probably going to be between Austin or Miami. You don't want to live in Miami. Well, not Miami, Miami, but. You live right here. Doral. How about here? Where are we at right now? We're on Palm Beach Island. Palm Beach Island. Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County, yeah. Palm Beach County is a good place for kids. Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood, you're gonna die. It's all right, but it's a little bit nicer here. I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to raise a kid in Miami or for a while. no, yeah, fuck too much shit. I mean, but we can live in Brickell. Brickell's nice. Yeah, Brickell's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you could do that. Texas is cool. Texas. Yeah, yeah. But I miss LA like you, man. I used to go to that fucking Palm Steakhouse. Oh, man, yeah. that mother right by the Staples Center. Yeah. I used to go there after all the Laker games yeah, yeah. all the time. Yeah, man. Who's fun? Is that his? Oh, so that's much her. for listening to silence. That's her bro control. Oh. That's oh. not that's not her. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just, I was making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you got <laughs> So now you think you'll do the podcast again? Absolutely. Do you think Red Band will come back with you? Absolutely. Yeah. Want me, want me to come with him? What's that? Want me to come with him? Yeah. I'll, I'll, so he'll feel more comfortable I'll come with yeah, him. Yeah, fuck yeah. We got four fucking chairs yeah. there, yeah. I'm not Red Band's a little more timid than me. I'm not yeah, you're real laid back. Yeah, yeah I, I figured. But you, and it's like you know what you do. You know what I do. What just, you gonna do to me? Just like you do in your like, comedy, you just adapt to the environment. Yeah. And, you know, but I, mean? I, you know, he might be thinking the worst. But I'm like, 
this is my city. My cousin already got the address. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm familiar. Like, if I was flying to fucking Omaha, Nebraska, I might would have brought some people with me. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. You might get stuck in fucking the woods yeah. somewhere or some shit. So, you yeah, know, you'd be like fucking shoveling or yeah, something. I really appreciate this, though. Yeah, so, all right. So you're going to start the podcast again eventually, mm -hmm. right? You're going to do video or just audio? Both. Good. Yeah, you need video. Mm -hmm. Video is more personal. I don't like that audio shit. Yeah. But you know what's crazy, bro? I'm building a fan base, a big fan base, without any gimmicks. Yeah. So I don't have like 100,000 followers, but I got like 50,000, but other 50,000 organic diehard followers yeah. that want to see. Yeah. yeah, you're you're not going yeah. and getting some fucking Indian. Yeah. I, I have and nothing I against anybody. I didn't get it off of gimmicks. Like, yeah, no, no, no. You're hard working, dude. Split. You got Joe Rogan calling you. Out. You got you got many many people. Yeah, you know. And I just got the info fucking yesterday. Right. You know, I, like you could have given it to me like a right. month ago. Right. What? what? Oh yeah. He, he <laughs> but bullshit. but yeah, man. I mean, you got a lot of things going for you. Absolutely. So, um, I you know, the question I have is. How the fuck do you fix Skid Row? Because you're in L.A. And I, I, I'm telling you, I used to go there every single week. It's a necessity. But how do you do that, though? It's a necessity. You think it's too far gone? I don't think you should fix it. Just let them go? Yeah. Why do you say that? Because we have way too many people, bro. In L.A. County, we have, like, almost 30 million people. So it's like, allow there to be a certain section in the city near industries where yeah. you just allow these people to fucking camp. So they don't come to the other neighborhoods. I, I, I mean, don't, I don't think you should fix it. Just stop wasting the time. I well, mean, they, well, they haven't fixed it yet. It's the balance, bro. Yeah, it's the balance, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, first you got to get that guy out of there. That's number yeah, one. You got to get that motherfucker gone. You think he'll go? Nancy Pelosi's Ugh. fucking. I think he's going to. Didn't Biden make him ambassador? Yeah, he's about to be gone. Get his Biden did what? He's he works for Biden now. Oh, really? So that lets you know what type of motherfucker we dealing with. Biden, trust you. So what do you think? You'll be in Texas for a little while? Go to Texas for a little while and then come back. Keep your joint there. You got your family in, in Georgia. So are you going to go on tour again? Yeah, I'm in uh, North Carolina next week. But I mean, are you going to do like tour, tour, tour? I'm on tour at Brandon Shop. You're what? I'm on tour at Brandon Shop. What's up? He's a comedian. Oh, no, no. I mean, are you going to go like on like a world tour, like state to state, like the whole that's thing? That's what we're doing. We're oh, okay. Yeah. That's what you're going to do. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I misunderstood you. We were in Tacoma last week, and before that, we were in. I don't been so many places. <laughs> yeah, you can walk, right? <laughs> Next week, we're in uh, Charlotte or Riley, one of them North Man. Carolina cities, and then. We got Hawaii in October. That'll be nice. And then next year, we're, uh, I think we're in London. London? But cool. we we got like 15 days between here and December. Yeah. You'll kill it in London. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll kill it in London. Hey, Tommy, I got one question for him quick. Yeah, go ahead. So you got, you've been in the business for a while. Any, well, there's probably a lot. What assholes are out there as a comedian? Any assholes that you're just like, man, that guy's just an asshole? I'm sure you have a lot. Most of the people who, <sighs> I'm an asshole. So I get along with the assholes. So I, like, people call Tony Hinchcliffe an asshole. I'm like, that's one of my best friends. So it's like all the people who people complain about being assholes, we're very close because I'm sort of an asshole, but I'm a desirable asshole because my assholeness comes from genuineness. Like Tony, like, you know, people call him an asshole, but it's like you still watch him, you know? Um... But like a guy who's like, you just tell people at their face, right? And they know what they're getting with you. But some guy who's like playing. So when I was working at the store, dick. I had a, uh, when I was working at the comedy store, I didn't really know a lot of comedians when I started working there. And I had an issue with Andrew Santino. But I haven't really, yeah. I'm trying to think, assholes. I ain't really. I Dane Cook's I mean, nobody likes Dane Cook. Nobody, but he makes money. But no comedians really like Dane Cook. Why is that? I don't know. I guess because of how he is, bro. Maybe how he presents himself yeah, to other people. I think, I think he said, too, like, wouldn't he go to the store or other places and he would take time away from other people that wanted to perform? Well, yeah, that's I mean, fucked up. That happens any time a uh, bigger... If Dave Chappelle comes... You're fucked. Yeah. Not you, but I'm just saying, yeah, like... You're, if Dave Chappelle comes at 7 o'clock and you're the 8 o'clock spot, 
It's here. Oh well, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But that that's part of comedy, you know. Is, is uh, Chappelle on all the time? No, he's a different person. Yeah, right. Chappelle is the same way he is on and off stage. Talks the same, acts the same. He's not an asshole, but uh, he knows he's Dave Chappelle. When he walked away from all that money, what'd you think? I was so young, bro. I was like, this motherfucker crazy. Right. <laughs> but now that I understand the industry, I get it. Yeah. 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 After I started listening to him, yeah. actually on Rogan, yeah. you know, like the the full, like, that's why I like the long interviews, because you let people talk, and it's I not get like it. 20 minutes yeah. and shit. I don't like that 20 minutes. I, I could never do that, because right. if I'm going to have somebody in like you, I, I, I want to just let you talk, talk right. and know about you and, right. and learn about you. Yeah. You know, I don't want to know 20 minutes shit. And yeah, exactly. I copied off of Rogan, but I copied off of Rogan because I like his style. Exactly. You know, I like to sit here for two, three hours, learn everything I can. Three hours, goddamn. You know, suck... No. <laughs> well, I, I mean, suck it in. Shit. But, you know, it goes quick, though, because you're just like... No, nah, we've probably been here like two hours, right? So yeah, we're like, two, like, like 2.15, 2.30, yeah, something. Yeah, we don't even feel like it. Like 20 minutes, you know yeah. what I mean? Because we're just hanging. I don't like that fucking vlog shit. I, yeah. I, I could never do it. Like, these guys in the fucking shower. That's what you should start making jokes about. Fucking. The, but, you know, you got to give it to them because they're getting yeah. a ton of views. These guys yeah. are taking showers with, like, fucking sunglasses on. And for some reason, remember that guy that Matt Cox was talking about, Casey something? He was like, all. And, uh -huh. I, I, and I've said it to his face. He's obsessed with this Casey guy that takes showers with sunglasses on and gets, like, 100,000 views. To me, that's just ridiculous. But hey, shout out to him because he's killing it. I guess. Not, not for us, right? <laughs> yeah, fuck that. So, well, what's the future plans, Dave? And I'll let you get out of here. With, uh, with the word that you'll come back. Yeah, I'm coming back, bro. Um, future plans for me, I just continue to get better, tour all over the world, be a semi household name, uh, be worth a few million in a few years. Um, Start a production company, you know. Because um, that's where the money's at, right? Yeah. I just want to be. <clears throat> you know what I think you should do? What's that? Like a series. Not with Netflix. They fuck everybody. What kind of series? Like like a 10-part series of, like, comedy. You know, um, uh, he, he's really funny. The Italian guy. Oh, fuck. I can't Sebastian believe Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. You know him? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's, he's funny. That's a, that's a, a I ain't going to say asshole, but that's a different guy to be around you know what i could you, you know he's italian so of course i that's like a, favored him but i could see i just something in me said i bet he's a fucking ass that's a that's a he's tell me now fuck no he's I've he, heard, he is funny i've like, heard stories as to why he's like the way he is but don't say nothing that's gonna you know yeah you know, yeah we'll just let it at that but on stage he is funny yeah and you know i've said hey to him numerous times and he just look at me so I'm like, okay Maybe he's got an entitlement thing like everybody yeah, else. You know, you know. Right, whatever. He's funny on stage. He's though. funny as fuck. Yeah. So if he's making people laugh, fuck it. Good for him, yeah. right? Now we're looking at your Instagram here. So tell me about some of this shit, because I want to know. What you want to know? All right. So right there, when you're on stage on the right, uh -huh. where's that at? Uh, Tacoma, Washington. That was this past weekend. That was this past weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Who is that? That looks so familiar. The white guy with the hat on. That's Brendan Shaw. That's Brendan. Hold on, right there. Yeah. Oh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I thought you he's on your Instagram. <laughs> you don't know who he is. Yeah, it was just a funny. That's Brendan Shaw right there. Play that one, Rob. Damn, thirteen thousand views on that. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll mute that. And hit play. Uh, Justin Elliott is the MC, and then David goes on, David Lucas, who's a monster, and then Chappelle does 20, and then I'll come on. Wow. But it's like monster. But it raises, see, that's great because it raises the show. The and it, show becomes I haven't felt like that. Don't, don't get me wrong, Chappelle's a monster, but me and Chappelle's one of my best friends, so we're really close. And I know his act, and you know he yeah. knows my act. But then when David Lucas opened, he, he came when I was doing um, The Vulcan in Austin. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, man, mind if I get a set? And I've always liked him at the comedy store. He's been really nice. I've never seen him do comedy. I I knew he's a roast guy in uh, Tony Hinchcliffe's show. I was like, yeah, yeah, dude, I'll give you 10 minutes. Blew it up to the point I was nervous in the back. I was yeah. like, ah, fuck, here we go. Yeah. And then that, I think, and that's where the athlete in me comes. I'm like, oh, this guy's going to make me better. Exactly. It's like when you're sparring, you don't want to spar the real shitty guy. Yeah. If you want to get to the next level, you got to go with the really good guy. Exactly. So I hit him up. I'm like, dude, you're in. He's like, what? I'm like, you're coming with me for the rest of the time. Yep, that is that is the right. And that I think it takes, you know, I've. Did he get a semi when he said that? <laughs> I mean, bro, like... You get compliments like crazy, man. 
Yeah, you should be very proud good. of yourself. So good. I'm a chill guy. And that's one of my good friends, Gary Clark Jr., who's right here. One of the best guitar players in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, I've actually because I attempted the guitar, but I have no patience. Yeah. I have a, the piano. That's me piano. at Edgar I wish Allen's I could play grave site. I love Edgar mm-hmm. Allen to the left. Up pink shirt. Up pink, yeah. Yeah, I like Edgar Allen a lot. Is that Baltimore? Yeah. Yeah, um, that was nice, man. That shows you got a heart. And then there's my tweet uh-huh. in the middle. Yeah, right there. Oh yeah, I did want to ask you about that. Bill Cosby going back to jail after he beat Hannibal Buress ass. <laughs> 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 now, what do you think about that Bill Cosby thing? Um, it is what it is. It's like right now, you know, what do girls do? Shrooms, coke, Molly. It's like if I. Give a chick a molly right now and fuck her. You know, we both pop a molly and then in 10 years she's like, he drugged me. It was like, bitch, we both did the drug. And remember, at the time when these girls were coming out, Bill Cosby was like the shit. Yeah. Like, See, that's the thing, bro. The cleaner you are, the easier it is to cancel you. Now, do you think that every other director, when a woman goes in, not everyone, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, mm-hmm. that I would probably say 70% of women that go into a director to get a movie to get the the role they probably wouldn't do sexual yeah, favors they're fingering themselves they're getting fucked whatever to get the role now you find a way girls to are whores bro yeah i'm not even a famous comedian and girls that offer sexual favors I'm like, bitch. all right and then you want to come at the guy and look i'm not sticking up for him i be but, telling i be but telling I, I i have a hard time believing at that period in his life that there was too many girls turning him down whether he spiked the drink to make it more crazy or whatever what i tell girls is i'm like have you seen my girlfriend Forget about it. Right. If you if you don't look better than her, don't need to be in my DMs. <laughs> you get, you're getting laid tonight for that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just how I feel. Don't if go back to Instagram. He's, he's got, there's one more funny one I want to say. But you know what they did with Bill? That was double jeopardy. That's why he got out. You can't hit somebody in the state and the foot. Was it my joke? Uh, keep it was a uh, IGTV one that was pretty funny. Keep going down. IG, what, Ellen accused of rape? Yeah. Is that it? It's in yeah. the middle right there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Watch, watch this shit. Unmute that. How do lesbians never get accused of rape? <laughs> <laughs> I know without a doubt that Ellen has ate some pussy against some bitches' will. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about that bitch say rape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh shit! That that's that was it. And there's a there might be one. See, I prepped that. See, I prepped that. There. Yeah. I hit Bill Cosby. And I hit that. Yeah. Give, give yeah. me a little bit of credit for that one. Let's see. Go down. There might be. Donnell Rollins shouting me out. That's Donnell Rollins. Click on in the middle. In the middle. That's Donnell. Yeah, he's pretty funny. That's the one I was saying is going to be here Friday. Dude, I knew he was going to try to roast me, so I started roasting him. I killed him. I got to stand him up. That's a young guy, David Lucas, who's a very funny dude. I knew he was going to try to roast me, so I started yeah, roasting him. Fun. I killed him. He's a heavy hitter. That's a young guy, David Lucas, who's a very funny dude. That's a short clip. I knew he was going to try to roast me, so I started roasting him. I killed him. I got to stand him up. That's a, young guy. That's a heavy hitter, though. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him on um, The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Yeah, he was on The Breakfast Club with uh, Charmaine or whatever. Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Charlemagne, the god. The god. The god. <laughs> you ever run into him? No. Do you want to run into him? No. <laughs> I, I, did, I knew that. I knew that. If I'm on The Breakfast Club, cool. If I'm not, whatever. Fuck you, pay me, right? I mean, I don't care, bro. That I'm, I don't care about a lot. I just like to be on stage. That's it. That's, that's <laughs> your thing. I do. If your podcast make me feel good, I do your podcast for the next twenty years. Yeah, man. If they make me feel good at the Breakfast Club, I do their podcast. It's about feelings, and that's the type of interview you're gonna get out of me. If I don't feel good, then you're not gonna get a lot out of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got a nice necklace, by the way. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Trying to be like you. Can I hold like six hundred? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You get me Rogan, yeah. Shit. <laughs> we'll play dice later. Yeah. All that. I'm just fucking. I don't with gamble you. no more, bro. Nah, <laughs> I don't <laughs> get. I, no, let me tell you. Don't gamble. Nah, I don't fuck you, with it. You'll never win. My girl, no, I don't gamble no nah, more. Don't I mean, let me gamble. No, she's bored. I don't. She's. <laughs> Well, when you see him playing with the phone, you know. Dude, that's uh, her. De- that's her demeanor. She's probably hungry as fuck. 
Yeah, all right, man. I'll let you get out of here. I appreciate your time, Dave. Of course, Anything bro. you want to shoot out? Thank you so much. No, they got it. David Lucas funny Instagram. All right, David Lucas. You know Lucas. what's crazy? A wow. guy offered me 12000 for my Instagram today. What do you mean for your Instagram? $12,000. To do what? Buy it. Fuck him. I told him fifty. <laughs> yeah. Fifty K he can have it. You know what you do? I offered you twelve. You threw fifty, take twenty five. I'm not taking twenty five. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm gonna do exactly. <laughs> yeah, so Dave has something. He has a counter offer. Yeah. All right. Tommy was part of it. Yeah. And yeah. because uh Dave is gonna introduce me to I mean, Rogan and a bunch yeah. of other people. Of so course, bro. Gonna, <laughs> I'm just we're fucking we're gonna, gonna get him out here. Listen, no, I don't want nothing from you. I appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah, Whatever yeah. you do is nice, but I appreciate, and I, you, I appreciate yeah, your solid fun. Dude, bro. You solid are too, dude. man. I'm yeah. glad I met you. Absolutely. Thank you, Tyler. Like Thank it. you for coming, miss. You got a good guy here. She know it. Yeah. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> All right, Dave. One more pump. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Good, bro. Well, I'll yeah. see you again soon.